What about her? Well, she's got a spare room. I'd not be ashamed for them to put up there, knowing the way some of them keep their homes round here. Put who up? Our Trevor and Polly. The kiddies can share Eddie's old room and they can stop at Emily's. I'm sure she wouldn't mind just for the one night. Or we could find them a little inexpensive bed and breakfast place if they'd sooner. They're not coming over here, are they? I didn't reckon you'd plan on bringing him over. I'm not planning. I've already done it. I dropped him a line yesterday saying they'd all be welcome to come and celebrate a Ruby wedding. And how many thousands have you invited? Oh, not thousands, Chuck. No, I'm a reasonable woman. Just 20 or so. I've made a list. Plenty. Mm, it's amazing how your friends tot up when you write them all down. Hi, when you give them free booze. Well, what would you prefer, Stan? A nice little candlelight supper for two, with me running down to the chippy and you fetching in a dozen cans of ale. Now you're talking. Listen, I never had no wedding reception, but I'm determined I'm not going to wait till me golden wedding before I have a celebration. Well, it's only ten years. In another ten years, Stan, always assuming I haven't left you for a younger man, would you be able to host uh, a champagne buffet at the Midland, followed by dancing till midnight to a live orchestra? What? Uh, I frightened you, didn't it? Now, after that, anything I suggest can only be an improvement. Hey. Is Tiffany nose bright red? Yes. Huh. Well, that summer tells me and Rudolph have in common. We're both lithe and graceful creatures. And you both got little horns. I'm not taking any notice of your petty insults today, Riley. Today I am feeling especially well disposed to man and beast alike. And you must fit into one of them categories. In the twinkling of an eyelash, Tinkerbell, lo, to a big Christmas. But there's me thinking that we put these up just to hide the dirty marks on the walls. No, I, I'm really looking forward to this Christmas. Especially with Len being stuck in Ashton so much these last few weeks. Didn't you? Isn't it so far afield? Well, he's got this mate of his. He's got half his men off sick and stands to lose his shirt if job's not finished on time. Something to do with the penalty clause. Oh, it's been worth it to him, but, well, it could be nice to have him home early for a change. I thought you said you liked being on your own. I do, till I am. Look, why don't you go on the blower to that victor and invite him to come over on Christmas Day for a nibble of your Christmas pud? Certainly not. A boxing day, then? No, Rita. Why no, Rita? Why not yes, Rita? What a brilliant idea, Rita. Tie ever so, Rita. Because, unlike some people I know, I quite enjoy my own company. Quite right. But if you enjoy your company, then perhaps Victor does as well. So by keeping it to yourself, you're just being plain selfish. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Keeping it all to yourself. You know... You are almost completely impossible. Only almost, and there's me thinking I were perfect. You are perfect, Rita. Hey, with my husband being away and you making remarks like that, it's perhaps as well you leave in district. Hey, if you get lonely, Curly will look after you, won't you, Pimple Bobs? <laughs> He'll tell you all about the little aliens with green heads and one eye. I know all about little green aliens. I work with one. <laughs> joking, only joking. She knows I think she's fabulous. When exactly do you and Marion move, Eddie? As soon as my transfer comes through, she'll be any day now. I will miss you when you've gone, you know, mate. What you mean is you will miss the sight of my rippling muscles umping them bins around like they're powder puffs. <laughs> Poetry in motion, it is. Actually, we miss, we'll miss the three cups of tea. He's the best grounder on the round. <laughs> <laughs> Look, darling, I know the cheque should have been posted. I'm not disputing that. All I'm saying is it must have got overlooked, that's all. Well, you'll just have to sort it out with Yardy. I mean, that's his... Dip what? Oh, yeah, he's in Stuttgart, isn't he? Uh, well, look, uh, I'll tell you what, um, leave it to me and I'll pop a check in the post, all right? Oh, I said a post it. What do you want, blood? Hang on a minute. Just a minute. Hang on a second. What's your name? Vera. Vera Duckworth, that means. Uh, Please to meet you. No. You're not Vera Duckworth. Not our Vera Duckworth. Because our Vera Duckworth has been sitting at machine since half past eight this morning. Or so the time punched on her card tells me. Oh, oh. oh yes, oh, indeed. Ivy! Yes, Mr. Owen. Do I, or do I not, pay you to supervise what I laughingly call my workers? Yes, Mr. Owen. Right, then tell me, supervisor, how they happen to be in two places at once, sitting here being paid on my time, then doing sweet fatty Adam somewhere else also on my well, time. Now, don't bother to explain. I know all the fiddles. 
Just make sure it doesn't happen again, all right? I didn't clock Vera in, I you know. I couldn't care less who clocked her in. I just don't want it to happen again. And dock her pay 20 minutes. Hey, well, over there, Jack. Do you know I told you them shrimps smell off? Well, they were double up in agony. I mean, I could just can't leave him, could I? I couldn't care less if your Jack was suffering from double hernia, yellow jaundice, or postnatal depression. You don't skive off on my time, got it? And that goes for the rest of you, all right? <clears throat> Right, I'll be off now, Stan. I don't know what time I'll be back, cos I might pop into town after. I want to have a look for a new frock. I'll need one for the party. What's wrong with your black one? Oh, there's no wrong with it. Except Mrs Lowther give it me. And I can hardly wear one of her cast-offs when she's coming as a guest, can I? Oh, they're definitely coming, are they? Well, I'm going to ask them when I go there later on. But I think they'll only be too pleased to join our festivities. She's become very attached to me, Mrs Lowther, you know. Yeah, she treats me more like a friend than an employee. We have lovely little chats over us coffee and digestives. It's more like a social occasion, really, me going there. You don't actually do any work, then? Well, of course I flame in work. Oh, Luke, when do I ever stop working? Certainly not in this house. That, Stanley, is a very expensive carpet. A very expensive carpet. It's not a flaming ashtray. When 20 of your friends have stomped all over it, it'll look like an ashtray. It's not a soggy beer, Matt. <laughs> he wants us to go to his mother's for Christmas, but I've put my foot down, I've told him straight. She can come to us and welcome. I like to be my own home at Christmas. Oh, will be a rest for you, though, You've got to be joking, Shirley. She's one of them women that want waiting on hand and foot. Even when you go there, it's fetch me this, oh, carry me that. Yeah. <laughs> Still, she must be going on a bit, either. No, but she's always been like it. When her husband were alive, she had him do it cooking, shopping, cleaning. She even had him do it ironing. Whoa. Well, what were up? What's she for here, Summer? Well, she yekers like. She'll see us lot off. I've told him that. I tell you, <laughs> the next time I come back, I'm coming back as the helpless type. Being competent has got me flaming nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> if you spent more time working and less time yakking, you wouldn't turn out rubbish like this. Right, right, what's up with him? What do you mean, what's up with him? Look, look at this, look at this button. Held on by one thread, one sneeze, and it's off. Well, they're only meant for wearing, Mr. Baldwin. I mean, they're not meant for sneezing in. <laughs> What are they doing instead of clacking around here? I thought I told you to keep a stricter control on things. It's still tea break, Mr Bomber. There's two minutes left to go. As soon as it's over, they'll all go back to work. Well, you make sure they do. I'm sick to death of these excuses. Oh, come no, on. No, compared to him, I could even like my mother in law. Oh, What's going to him lately, anyway? What do you mean, lately? He's always been a bad tempered fuck, fine old misery. Well, he always has where I've been concerned. I don't know, dear. He's never been as bad as this before, has he? I think you must be having problems with that clubber, you know. What's up, Cheddar? You don't have to blame him well take it out on us, does it? No. Now, little Elder, how's the party of the year going, eh? Have you got Rod and Bianca jetting in, have you? Do you know, I saw a film once where they released a flock of pale pink doves into the sunset. One for every year they've been wed. <laughs> Mind you, that was a palazzo in Venice. Not a terraced house in Weatherfield. Hey, you want to have a word with Jack Duckworth? See if he'll spray some of that, uh, that, that, that cotchy needle stuff on Chalky Whiteley's pigeons. <laughs> Ten a notice, Hilda. I think a ruby wedding's quite an achievement. <laughs> what, married for 40 years to a big fat oggy, an achievement? It's a blooming miracle. Have you decided what you're having, Hilda? Or is it going to be quiet? Will it be near Christmas? It's better not be quiet. I've been to Moss Frost, me, and I've had my tuxedo. Hey, I look uh, quite a dazzler in tux, mate. <laughs> I'm getting the Emanuels to run me up a nice little ball gown. Nothing flash. Just a few hundred yards of diamante studded pure silk chiffon. Yes, well, you'll all need something to wear. Mind you, I think a tuxedo will be just a bit much. Yeah. You mean we're all coming? Even him? What do you mean, even him? You wouldn't miss out on your favourite fella now, would you, love? Oh, I wouldn't dream of not having you there, Fred. Oh, I'm going to get me written invitation then, am I? Oh, you're not being invited. Well, you just said I was. No, I said you'd be there. And so you will be, serving behind the bar as usual. You see, I've decided to either select for the celebrations. Now, I was thinking along the lines of uh, an informal but elegant cocktail party with some savoury little canopies, if you think you could manage that. <laughs> Shall we uh, go in the back and discuss the arrangements better? Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> I suppose it'll do. Pity it's not a bit bigger, but still. Oh, I 
think it's a very cosy little room myself. Oh, cosy, yeah, but hardly elegant. I mean, the select at the Flying Horse has got red flock wallpaper and a, a chandelier with gold cherubs on. Well, why don't you go there? Oh, no, no, I couldn't, Betty. I mean, uh, it wouldn't seem right, not with me being part of the family here, as mm -hmm. you might say. Besides, I say her catering's rotten. Have you got anything in mind, you know, in the way of food? Only you mentioned a bit earlier on about some canopies, you see. Well, I mean, it's all right for one of Mrs Lowther's do's, but uh, I can't see Eddie Yates sitting with one of them stuck in his fist. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, Stan, no. I come to think of it. <laughs> well, uh, what would you suggest, like? Well, lovey, I mean, it's uh, what you're sort of, you know, you're prepared to pay. Oh, you know, per head. Well, we don't want a stint. Mm. I mean, if you're going to do a thing, you want to do it properly or mm. not at all, I always say. Well, I mean, anything up to, say, uh, a pound. A pound? Mm. I will not get much, will it? I mean, a few sausage rolls, some sandwiches and a couple of plates of biscuits. Oh, sandwiches and biscuits? Mm. Oh, no, we don't want that, Betsy. I mean, I can do that at all. Well, um, I think we could stretch to, say, uh, one pound fifty. Well, that rules out fillet steak, doesn't it? Anyway, leave it with me, lovey. No, no, we don't want steak, neither, Betty. No, I was thinking more like a, a nice cold buffet with a flower arrangement in the centre and candles and that. Mm. Mrs Lowther always has flowers and candles on her buffets. Mm. Oh, she's won prizes for her arrangements. <laughs> and they'll be coming, of course. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, Hilda, I'll stick a couple of croissants in the jam jar, eh? Come on, I'm only joking. Oh, <laughs> you'll make it look nice, lovey. Yeah, yeah, well, I know you'll do your best. <laughs> oh, do you know? It's a pity Mrs. Walker's still at her journeys. All these years, she's been employing me to clean in here. Now, for the first time in my life, I could be telling her what to do. Perhaps that's why she's still at their journeys. So, how do? Oh, glad to see you're fully recovered. Recovered? Well, according to Vera, you were on your deathbed this morning. Ah, ah, well, you see, it's me sinus, you see. And when I have a bad attack, I can't breathe, and she's got to be there with the aerosol. Oh, I see. Food poisoning and sinus trouble. If I was you, I'd take it very careful. Flaming Nora, she don't have to embarrass me sometimes, you know. I mean, I don't mind being a flaming alibi, but I just wish you'd tell me. 26, please, love. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we say, sorry I'm late home, love, I missed last bus. That's one problem you'll never have, Riley. Are you getting at me again? No, I'm not. I'm complimenting you as it so happened, saying you're so dead honest you'd never light a fish foul a fella if you had one. You are getting at me. I'm not. I didn't mean now, it's honest. It's just this dainty little gob of mine, I open it and words come out of their own accord. I never know what I'm going to say till I've said it. Oh, you're feeling a bit down, love. I know how you feel. Do you? Oh, aye, Pagley, what's it me, you know? I mean, underneath this laughing clown's face lies a very sad man. Oh, I am sorry. Is it anything serious? Serious? In wed to Alvira. It's more than serious, love. It's near flaming terminal. ta oh. See? How would you like it if you had a husband constantly poking fun at you? Well, after working with you all this time, I think I'd hardly notice it. <laughs> Hello, Captain Miss Riley speak. Hello, Mr. Fairclough. Oh. Yes, yes, she is. It's for you. Hello, love. <laughs> How are you diddling? You are. Oh, well, that's good. No, nothing happened here. No great dramas. So, what time will you be on then? Oh, never. Right. Well, just think on. Don't kick the milk bottles when you come home, because I shall be snoring me head off. Okay. Take care. See you. Tra. You're missing him, aren't you? Oh, it's this weather. I've nobody put me cold feet on when I get into bed. Well, you know the agreement was he was supposed to run the place, right? And I was going to help out when I could. And who's been getting it in the neck almost daily? Muggins. I'll give you an instance. The brewery bill's due for payment, right? And they won't deliver till they get the cash. And where's he? He's, he's in some trade fair in Stuttgart. Ah, well, there's a fin fellow with a finger off the pies, is yardly. Oh, yeah, and where does that leave me, then? The little old lady's sitting at home doing the knitting. I've got another business to run as well, you know. Well, then, maybe you shouldn't have got mixed up with the graffiti. Oh, I'm a coat. Well, at least I think I can, if everyone pulls their weight. At the moment, I need all the hands on the wheel. Well, things aren't going so good, then. I thought this would be the time that was building up to your busiest period. Oh, it is. 
I mean, bookings are a bit slow coming in, but then, uh, well, lots of people leave it to the last minute, don't they? Oh, it'll pick up, but I mean, you just can't leave it grinding on at its own accord. I mean, in the club business, you've got to be there all the time, promoting, hustling, grafting. <laughs> Rather you than me, mate. I've got to go. So long. Oh, yeah, hi, hi. <clears throat> uh, was it something I said? No, no, he's got a bit of trouble on the club, I think. He's a bit tetchy. Oh, yes, yes, I had heard rumours. Not doing as well as they'd thought, I gather. Well, you need to look so flipping pleased about it. Please, me? Oh, would I take pleasure? Yeah, That's not a man's misfortune. Right, yeah. Of course, mind you, in his case. Yeah, what are you having? Uh, well, I was well, well, put it that away. Way. I'll get them. Sure. Sure. Wait, uh, sure. Bet, love, could I have the same again, please? Right, will you, Mrs. Uh, Yates? Tell me, will you and Mr. Yates still be here for Ilda's ruby wedding do? Well, if we move, we'll come back for it. Why? Well, I reckon it's definitely an event not to be missed, that's all. <laughs> hey, how are you fixing moving your toothbrush to Berry on Wednesday? Wednesday? That's a bit silly. What's the rush? It's been sold, that's what my transfer takes place. Well, the sooner I live near the depot, the better. Well, I suppose so. I'll bring my mum and let her know. Ah, yeah. oh, poor old Elsie. There'll be a gap in her life when you pay go. <laughs> a gap? When them two leave, it'll leave a space bigger than Cheddar Gorge. <laughs> Some of us might be a little bit broad in the beam, Mrs Duckworth, but when it comes to sheer blooming out size, it's not to beat your mouth. <laughs> You. I thought you were going to town to buy a frock. Deciding not to bother. I'll probably wear me black after all. I had to bother to save anyway. What about it being Miss Lather's cast off? Well, it won't matter now. They can't come. Oh, they'd have been out there, lovers, anyway. They would not. This isn't going to be one of your beer and pork pie deals, you know, Stanley. Oh, no. This party is going to be exactly how Mrs Lowther herself would have arranged it. They'd have felt perfectly at home. And why can't they come? Well, they're going to Tenerife on the 10th. How do on the 7th? Yes, well, they've, they've got a lot to attend to. There's always a lot to do before they go on holiday, busy people like them. Still, it's given me a very nice present. How much? How do you know it's money? Well, if they've got time to come to our party, she won't have time to get presents, will she? Five pound. And I'm going to put it towards the cost of the refreshments. How much is that going to be? Oh, well, I don't know yet. I'm waiting for Betty to tell me. Betty? What's it got to do with her? Oh, didn't I mention it, Chuck? I've decided to have the party in the Rovers Select instead of in here. After what you said this morning, I know how worried you are about the new carpet. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's me done. Time to clock off. Uh -huh. Hey, duck, but it's only 25 past. So let me out to be alive for five minutes. Look, by the time I've been settled, we'll come back. It will be time to clock off. Aye, and I will have your guts for garters. You know what she's like when she's got action man on her back. Oh, oh he's gone off to the club. I don't think we'll see him again today. Listen, I don't care if I never see him again this year. Uh-oh. Uh, hello, Mr Baldwin. I just thought I'd save electricity bill, you know, for a bit. Uh, well, I just felt like a bit of a stretch, you know. You get dead cramped, you know, we've been working solid for four hours. Theater, the other day you worked solid for four minutes. I'll strike a gold medal. Ivy, where's Shirley? Uh, she's gone home. What do you mean, home? gone home? It's not half past five yet. This one's already set on the mark. That one's beetled off. I'm surprised any of you stay for the final whistle. The liberties your supervisor lets you get away with. But, Mr. Ball, Don't you... butt Mr. Ball with me. I'm up to here with bats. See me in the office straight after work. Oh, What's up, Betty? Seen a Martian? <laughs> no worse, Hilda Ogden. Oh, you, Betty? Uh, could I have another word about me comestibles? <laughs> Not in front of the child, Hilda. Do you mind? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's for us ruby wedding party, you see. We're going to have it uh, here on Wednesday evening, 8 while 11. I have dropped a, a written invite through your door, but uh, I do hope you'll be able to honour us with your presence. Mr Tatlock as well, of course. Oh, uh... uh thank you, Hilda. We'd love to come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Betty, yes, I've been thinking. Yes. How about a nice bit of turkey? Oh, love it. With that amount of people, it'd prove a bit, uh, you know. No, I was thinking more on the lines of a traditional Lancashire hot pot, you know, with all the trimmings. Oh, no, not hot pot, no. Betty. I mean, no offence, but we don't want out common. Might as well go and get fish and chips and have done with it. Mm. Hey, great idea, that, love. I just fancy a nice plate of fish and chips, salt and vinegar, all, all the bits. Better than all your smoked salmon. 
Yes, well, as you're not being invited, Jack Duckworth, you can just keep your nose out. Betty, perhaps we'd better go in the back and discuss my arrangements in private. Uh, perhaps over a nice cup of tea? Yes, well, come on through. Right. Come on. Hey, Hilda! What? Telephone message for you. I'm going to start charging for being an answering service. Oh, me. a message you from? Yeah, you're Trevor. Just a minute. I've only just got in from work. Oh, it'll be about the party, then. I got my letter. Now, did he say what time they'd be arriving? And are they all coming, or just him and Polly? Well, um... As a matter of fact, they're not coming, love. It, it seems they've got some do on at work and uh, they won't be able to get away in time, but uh, he sends you his best wishes and all that. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose it was a bit short notice. I mean, uh, well, he, he does have a, a lot of functions to attend this time of the year, you know, with him being an executive like. Maybe a nice big platter of roast chicken with some assorted cold meats and then some hot cheese and mushroom volleyballs. Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah. Y yeah, Mrs Lowther always has for me, Vance. Well, as you suggested, love it, shall we go and discuss it inside? Come on. And instead of a cup of tea, <clears throat> a nice glass of sherry would be more the ticky Come on, Come on. But you don't seem to understand. The pressure's on. We've got a lot of orders to get out before Christmas. You know, I don't need reminding, Mr Bolton. Oh, no? Well, I think you do. This gets more like a playgroup by the minute. Look, I've told you. I had to send Shirley home at dinner time. She had a temperature of 103 and she was coughing and sneezing all over. Spare me the medical details, will you? All I know is that's the third one we've had off sick this week. Well, you can't blame me for flipping flu bugs. I can blame you for not keeping the ones that we've got here up to scratch. Oh, just because Vera were late this morning. And somebody clocked her in. Yeah, well, I've had words with him about it's that. It's always flaming happening, it isn't is it? It is not always flaming happening. There's no need to start exaggerating. Well, all I know is that lately they've been getting away with blue murder, both in their attendance and their work, when they bother to turn any out, that is. Look, I know there's always the odd faulty garment, but mostly we have got a very high standard. High standard? You don't know the meaning of the word, Ivy. Their work has got very slipshod, and you've let it get that way. Look, Mr Baldwin, just because you're having problems with that club of yours, it doesn't mean you can use me as a bloody whipping boy. The club has got nothing huh. to do with it. The only problems I've got are the problems that I've got here. And I'm holding you as the supervisor responsible. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, perhaps you'd better get somebody else in to do the job, and I'll go back on machines. You know, At least I'll get a bit of peace and quiet there. I might just do that. I mean, heaven knows I've got enough of them nine idle. Right. Right, I shall then. Ask from tomorrow, I'm back on that bench, all right? Hey, hang on, hang on. Just a minute. No need to rush, is it? I mean, uh, well, I've, I've got to find a, a replacement. Hmm. That's your problem, isn't it? Baldwin's not here to see me. Never mind, he's had to see you. Um, has anybody heard about Darling Park? Is she still poor, like? No, uh, yeah, they've been know what it is. Oh, she could have some tests on Thursday and all that, but... Oh, well, she'll not be in then. This'll do me. Oh, hey, oh. Will you show us how it's done, or have you forgot? No, I've not forgotten, Vera. Hey, so what new coming up? Are you trying to set a new rate? No, I'm not trying to set anything either. I'm just looking to earn my wages, same as everybody else. And if that Eric doesn't hurry up with some stuff, we won't have out to sew it a bit. Yeah, go on, Ivy, give him a roll of pen. There's no to do with me. Well, you are the supervisor. Not anymore, I'm not. Hey, Say that again, Ivy. I've not seen any need to repeat myself here, are you heard? Well, why not? What's that? Mm, come on, Ivy, tell us. Well, as far as I know, there is no supervisor. Not unless he's got somebody from last night. Oh. So from now on, you can do as you like, you can come and go as you please, you can sew as you like, but don't bother me. I to give you it, Posh. We had words, Vera. Well, what about? You lot. We had a very interesting discussion about poor timekeeping, poor work and general behaviour. Oh, you've had a difference of opinion with him? Oh, no, no. My opinion's same as his either. Except over who is responsible. Well, it's not me, not anymore. Hey, it's not like... It's not giving you a show. Is it you've not chucked it in? No, a case of snap out, sir. Now, if you don't mind, I'm working. Oh. And you can cancel it from now on. Oh, I'm sorry you're going. Yeah, I am too. We'd started looking on you and Eddie has fixed you. Oh, that's nice of you. I'm sorry to be going, but somebody's got to look after my mother. Mm. When are you off then? Tomorrow. Oh, you'll come back though, won't you? Show us the baby. Oh, yeah, we'll pop back all the time. You lucky thing. You've got so much to look forward to. Do you want a boy or a girl? Oh, I'll take what's given me. Quite right. You can start expressing a preference when you get to number three or four. Oh, oh give us a chance. <laughs> You've got your chance. I wish I'd had three or four. Well, I think two. One of each, that's what I'd like. Well, <laughs> would have liked. I can just see Eddie with a load of kids. All little Eddies. It'd be lovely, then. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I kind of know. 
It's my part in this I'm not sure about. Oh, go on. You're just cut out for it. Is he looking after you? Oh, it's been marvellous, really. Well, you know, considering he's got a lot on his plate. Life's a bumpy road. But there's always some at round the corner. <sighs> Bigger bumps, usually. Uh, we'll have a drink with you before you go, though, won't we? <laughs> well, you will. You're going to the Oggies, aren't you? Oh, I yeah. Bit inconsiderate of him, isn't it? Having it on you last night. Well, it's just a thing, really. I'm not very good at saying goodbyes. So we'll just go there and slip off. Inconspicuous in my condition. <laughs> Will you stop making that row? Like a lump of coke stuck under the back gate. Leave her be, Fred. She's happy. Happy? What right has she to be happy? She's been wed to Stanley for 40 years and she's still outside the loony bin. Oh, only just. Wed to Stan. 40 years and him about as much use and comfort to her as a gun barrel. And she's singing. Elder belt up, Chuck. There's a good one. All right, so I'm not no Mariah Callas. But if I want to sing, I'll sing. Just the same as her, except I haven't had no training. But I'll tell you what, I'd like to see her bottom that select the way I've just bottomed it. Uh, you can tell Mrs. Walker that that select tonight will be a real credit to both of us. A real credit. We've been together now. I'm not saying it's desperate. I'm just saying it's a matter of life or death. I've got to have that delivery by Thursday. Well, uh, the check's in the post. I mean, what more can I do? Yeah, well, if, if, if you could see your way clear to doing that, I'd be ever so grateful. Right. Thanks a lot. OK, bye. Yes, Vera. Uh, can I have a word, Mr. Bowles? If it doesn't take too long, yeah. Do you mind forming an orderly queue outside, please, Shirley? Well, I'm here for the same reason as Vera, I think. Yeah, I think she is, Mr. Baldwin. It's, it's about Ivy. Yeah, about Ivy. Uh, well, you some sort of delegation, you two, are you? Oh, no. But, look, it's hard lines on Ivy. I mean, look, it, we're only a couple of us that... What's the blame? I mean, well, me and the road. Yeah, I'm me. Oh, good. Thanks for telling me. I now know who to fire. Hey, I don't want firing. But I can't just sit back and see Ivy fired, neither. No, she's had a very hard time just lately, Mr. Bush. Yeah, sir, have I had a hard time? And if you don't all do a day's work, we'll all have a hard time together down at the Labour Exchange. You will make her up, won't you, Mr. Bowden? You will. We've got a supervisor. Me. And I'm looking at me watch. Discussion over. Out. <laughs> Hey, Beth, stick that behind the bar, will you? Eddie, love, this will have to stop. I mean, you can't afford it, and you're a married man. He showers me with gifts, you know. It's not for you, you pudding. It's for Stan and Hilda. It's what we got them with the whip round, you know. Well, what, what do you get him then, Eddie? What's he got to do with you? You never chipped in. Aren't you mean devil? Well, he was collecting, weren't he? I won't trust him to the end of the street. Where is it, any road? Well, it's a surprise for tonight. But it's very nice, though, isn't it, Kale? Oh, yeah, it's very nice, if you go into that sort of thing. Tell us where it is, then. Come on, Eddie, the lads are waiting. Yeah, the lads are waiting. We're going for a farewell bevy down the Laughing Donkey, you know. Isn't this place good enough for you? Well, you see, the way it is, Fred, it's a tearful farewell. Only if I was supping here with you, well, I'd be glad I was going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Beth. See you. Well, what did you say, then, when you went in? Nothing. It won't even listen. Just say, get back on the machine tomorrow, or less, didn't it? Yeah, it's got out of all proportion, you know. It's in, well, I don't know. What's Ivy say? Well, according to her, she won't have a job even if it begged her. Oh, she can be very stubborn, can Ivy? She well, can be very stiff-necked when she wants to. Well, they both can, can't they? I mean, that's the trouble. Well, maybe she means it. Does she, Eck? Oh, no, I don't think Ivy ever wanted to be supervisor. Not, not only for the money, you know. I think she never wanted to be one of the bosses, because if she had done, she'd have cracked down a damn sight harder on you lot, I can tell you. Oh, go on, make me feel better, go on. No, but if she does mean what she says, then there's a job going. Well, who's going to put in for supervisors? Well, nobody round here, I hope. Here, Stan, I want your opinion. Do you think the black? Hmm. I say, which do you think, the black, or shall I wear the outfit I got for Eddie and Marion's wedding? I thought you'd send one special to the cleaners. Yes, I did. I sent the black one to the cleaners. But this is new, you see. There's only one little spot on it, and that'll come out. As long as you clean. Well, you see, I've been thinking about the black one all along, but uh, it's the accessories. I've only got one handbag that goes with it, and that's all scuffed. They're both very pretty. You see, if I had them earrings, do you remember I pointed them out to you in some of his window? They go lovely with this. Do you remember me saying? To be honest, love, I don't remember. But then you look in so many windows, don't you? Yeah, it's all I ever will do, isn't it? 
Well, are you going to get yourself decent or what? Now, come on, get upstairs. There's enough hot water for a bath. I don't want a bath. Stanley, for us Ruby wedding, you might at least make the effort. It's only once every 40 years. Well, I hope there's going to be plenty of food at this do, because I shan't have any time to get any tea. Well, there's a buffet. Oh, that could mean anything. Oh, well, give her a due. The Rover's buffet's usually very good. It depends how much the oggies are lashing out. Have you ever seen sardines on sticks? Anyway, you lock up and I'll see you there. Right at home. Hello, cabin. Oh, yes, Miss Fedrick, she's just on her way out. Oh. It's lengthy. you. Ta. Hiya, what's to do? Oh, egg. Well, how long's that going to take you? Oh, come on, Len. We've got to make an effort. Right, well, I'll go on ahead and you just get there when you can, eh? All right, well. I'll try and save some food for you. OK. Take care. See you there. Has he been delayed? He's not left Ashton yet. Oh. He's finishing off job now. They were held up with some. How far is it from Ashton? Oh, half, three quarters of an hour. But if he's rushing to get to the Oggies do, could take best part of two hours. <laughs> to all of Bye. Hilda, come here a minute, love. Your label's showing. You are. Just turn round them off. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Do you know, kid? You look a million dollars. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you know, I don't feel old enough to be having a ruby wedding, I don't, honest. Ah, oh, Stan, leave that alone. Oh, you want some at left for when the guests arrive. Oh, go on, you might as well eat it now. You've had your fingers all over it. Oh, hello, Alf. <laughs> Very nice of you to come. Oh, am I the uh, first here? Is it all over? Oh, <laughs> now you're the first. Now then, uh, which would you prefer, uh, sweet or dry? Uh, sherry. Oh, sherry. Uh, yeah, I'll have the sweet. Uh. <laughs> He'd rather than pint of beer like me, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, well, Mr Roberts is more used to moving in society than you are, Stan. Yeah, well, any road. Congratulations, here's the next 40. Oh, thank you. <laughs> A buffet as well, eh? Yes. I suppose that means you want your Christmas club money out tomorrow? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, How about just one in here first, fortifiers, before we go in? Good idea. Right. Hey, great minds think alike, eh? What are you having? And you, good lady. Oh, you're getting around in, then? Well, it's just that this might be your last chance to get one, and, uh, well, I'd be honoured. Well, I have a pint, thank you. Lager, sir. You know, this one's had a hangover since dinner time. Oh. Yeah, went out with the lads. A great bunch of lads. You couldn't meet a better bunch of lads. Oh, it won't be the same without you, Eddie. There'll be a big empty space in that cab. Hey, uh, <laughs> a pint and a lager, is it? Yeah, and one for yourself, Fred. See if he puts a smile on your face. I'll tell very much. I'll try my best with uh, a large scotch. And if he thinks I'm carrying him home after this... I'm all right. I've been pacing myself. Anyway, Kelly's cabin me go home, aren't you? Yeah. Nobody's going to carry you home. You'll be fit enough to go under your own steam, or you're not going to get Hey, you wouldn't disgrace Hilda on her 40th anniversary, would you? No, I wouldn't do that. Hey, Vera, you going to the do? Not being invited, Chuck, and considering they get crashed our housewarming. Oh, just go, you'll be all right. We don't go anywhere where we're not invited to, will we? Free ale? No, I think you buy your own. No, in that case. Uh, it won't matter if it was free ale. We won't go if they paid us. Oh, uh, would you like another glass of sherry, Alf? Uh, well, if it's all the same to you, I could slaughter a pint. So would I. Can we have two, bit? No, no, I'll get them. Seeing it's uh, small round, you know, I'll leave you to shout when they're all here. Oh, <laughs> <are they>? oh. <laughs> oh, it's early yet, you know, Yeah, Stan? that clock of Annie Walkers is always fast. Okay. Now, uh, listen, Alf, if you're feeling peckish, don't be backward where the buffet's concerned, oh. because we don't want to see anything left. You're very nice, isn't it? Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Mm, that's it. Here oh. we are. Oh, oh happy oh. anniversary, Hilda, oh, and well done, Stan. Thank you. And congratulations. Oh. It's a card from me and Harriet. Oh, that's lovely. Who's Harriet? Oh, Stanley. <laughs> Who is Harriet? My budgie. Ah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? Here you are, Elder. Some chocolates for you. Ah, oh, right. And if you think they miss shapes, they're not. I just left my bag on top at radio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sherry girls. Oh, look, Stanley, Elder. Oh, hey, oh, I hope in 40 you. years I'm inviting yeah. you to our Ruby yeah. wedding. Oh. Come here, Elder. I'm going to give you the big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Mammy Pearl! Oh! Oh! oh. oh Eddie! God. Look, nobody moved. Don't move! Oh, I'm sorry, Hilda. Oh. Oh. 
Cheers. Cheers. I know you've caused ruptures, don't you? Oh, well, I'm glad it had some effect. Oh, I'm not so sure you've done yourself a good turn. All the girls think you're being very hard on either. They can think what they like. You don't need to tell me that's me being an employee, but uh, did you really give her a push or did she jump off herself? Now, would I give her a chop just like that? You would, but yes. No, no, I told her that I thought she was responsible for all the slackness we've been having recently, and she said, oh, well, in that case, perhaps you get all to get somebody else for the job. I said, yeah, I think I will, and she said, right, that's it, I'm off. Mm -hmm. I mean, interpret that whichever way you like. So either way, you'll be looking for a supervisor. Why? You putting him for the job? Me? No, thank you, I've been there before. More kicks than eight, Miss Me. Yeah, but you've got experience on oh, that, Oh, yeah, sure. You make it up with Ivy. You'll do all right, you won't find her better. She might spit in your eye, but on the other hand, she might not. I think that's the law. I am sorry, Hilda, honest. All right, Eddie, I forgive you. Well, I'll put them on one side, Hilda. Tall off. Hey, don't put them over there. Someone might start eating them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll put them on top of the other. Oh, I'm delighted. Oh, 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 be careful. Be careful. Oh, yeah. Where are you going, Dad? Leonardo, not with you, then? Uh, oh, no, he's coming. He'll be late, that's all. He's working over in Ashton. Well, if he gets here soon, we might liven things up a bit. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what else in here, and all there, too. I know, just what I was thinking. Well, daughter, really lives in North Wales, doesn't she? Mind you, I don't know where the sun is. Oh. Stan doesn't see eye to eye with her, Trevor. You know, from things he said, daggers drawn. You thought Irma had been here, though, wouldn't you? It is sad, cos I mean, somebody ought to get up and say something. Like, why aren't your kids here? <laughs> no, I mean, make them a little speech, you know. But, I mean, well, the children ought to do it, but they're not here, are they? Well, you make a speech, Mary. Oh, thankfully, it's not my place. But, I mean, I'll you're the nearest neighbour. No, no. Ah, you're always on your hind legs in council. Go on. Yeah. Well, what could I say? I mean, I could say plenty, but they wouldn't oh, like it. Oh, go on. Make Hilda's mm. day for it. Sure. Yeah. I was going to buy you a ruby brooch, but you know with them like at Woolers, the security's terrible. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I'll saddle for you. Still, I'm very glad you could come. Oh, I know. <laughs> Well, Hilda, you stuck the course better than I did. Yeah, well, it's looking all, isn't it? I mean, meeting oh, sure. Mr. Wright. Yeah, yeah. I uh, don't envy you, look, Hilda. Ah, I'll say. If I can just have your attention for a few moments, please. I have been asked to say a few words on this auspicious occasion. Language. It's a very respectable phrase for a very respectable occasion. I hope it's going to stay that way and all. <laughs> Aye. Well, we've all known Stan and Hilda for many years, and I know you all join me in wishing them every happiness for the future, hoping they'll be as happy as they have been for the last 40 years. Yeah. It's a long time, you know, and life has its ups and downs. I dare say Stan and Hilda have had theirs. And, well, I was going to say that uh, after 40 years, you could wipe the slate clean. But I think Hilda might misunderstand me and I wouldn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, they, they, they met in the blackout. Ah, oh, yeah, Hilda, you said that luck was on your side. <laughs> uh, Stan was on a weekend pass. Well, it was some pass, wasn't it? It was a 48-hour pass, Stanley, not a 48-year one. <laughs> so if you've got any ideas you're due back at Catrick in 1991, forget it, because you're due here. And we'll be very happy to see you, and we hope you'll be as happy then as you are now. Anyway, congratulations. Very best wishes, Stan and Hilda. Stan and Hilda. Thank you. Listen here, eh, I'm not much good at making speeches like Alf, but eh, well, I'd just like to say that, eh, as you know, me and Marion are going tomorrow, and eh, well, we're very sorry to be going because the time round here has been the happiest time of my life, and a lot of that is due to Stan and Hilda. And, well, while I've been living in their house, everything that happens to me is, well, it's been good, you know. And I mean, they might not have a lot. But there's a lot of rich people that haven't got half what they've got. So, uh, I just hope in 40 years' time and that we can, uh, we can invite you to our ruby wedding. <laughs> anyway, yeah. God bless. Stan and Hilda. Stan and Hilda. It means a lot to me, that, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie, for them poor few words. Come on, Rita, give us a song. Yeah. We're all right for music, aren't we, Beth? Yeah, on a night like this. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a song. You can find someone to play piano. Oh, well, I can play Camp Town Racers on the trumpet. <laughs> hey, uh, Jack Dawes can play piano. Oh. He's in bar. Shall I ask him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, go on. Hey, Jack, they're asking if you'll come and play at piano and select. Are they? You do it. Well, you tell them I'll only play if they keep us well supplied with ale. I think they might meet your terms. Hang on. He says he'll play if you keep ale coming. Ah, oh, tell him all, all right. Is he going to do it? 
Vera says, anywhere he goes, she goes, same terms. Oh, does she? Well, you can just tell her. I feel like Dr Kissinger here. Hilda says, you're more than welcome, Vera. <laughs> and does she now? Right, come on, Liberace. Yes. Oh, hey, Do you think we'll get this far? I don't know. Funny, isn't it? I was thinking myself as having everything in front of me, but it must be a bit sad when you suddenly realise it's all behind you. Give us a kiss. <laughs> You'll be 80 odd. I'm still keen with any luck. <laughs> Fans here, Rita. Oh, right. Maybe it's all that. Right. Now then. Right. What do you want to do? There's only one thing to do, isn't there? I don't feel too bright, Eddie. Will you take me home, please? Yeah, sure. Come on. Can you come down a bit? Hey, try this. Maybe it'll get down to your fingers. Oh, are you me yes. curls? Oh. oh, hey, good job they're not real. Oh. Well, never mind, Hilda. Come on, then. We've been together now for 40 years. And they don't seem a day too much. There ain't a lady living in the land as I'd swap for my dear old Dodge. There ain't a lady living in the land as I'd swap for my Now it's done the singing. No, it's uh, Marion's not feeling too good, so we're sloping off. You oh, know. I see. And you look, look uh, if I don't see you again, all the best, eh? Yes, sir. Uh, I hope you still feel a bit better, love. Oh, it's nothing but you really. Hey, look, Marion, you just keep him in order. No, I'm only joking, all the best, <laughs> I mean it. Yeah, same to you and all, Fred. Come on, Bye bye, Doc. Bye bye. Hey, what about your Prezi? How are you feeling now, then? Heading for a bit of fresh air. Not sure that I am. Hey, officer, who are you looking for? I haven't done nothing. You wouldn't have to know where a Mrs. Fairclough is, would you? Yeah, she's in the Rovers. Uh, there's a do in the select, that's where she is. Right. Tough. In the pub. That's a port of lemon. And you want a bit of lemon? Yeah. Bayek, somebody starts singing and look what happens. Uh, is there a Mrs. Fairclough here? We were told there was. Well, yes, that's there you can hear singing. Uh, is there somewhere we could have a private word with her? Well, yes. Yes, you better come through to the living room. Betty, yeah. do you want me to get Rita? Please, love. Um, what is it exactly? If we could just have a word with her. Do you know her well? Yes, I mean, we all do. Well, uh, you best come with us then. Now, uh, where do we go? Straight to the oh, oh, that's smashing. I really like that. Yeah. That was smashing that time. I enjoyed it. Can we do it again? I've got to play now. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 You're going to play Stan? Oh, Stan. Oh, Stan. Yeah. Do you remember that one, Stan? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seems like yesterday, doesn't it? Yeah, Where does your life go to, eh? Where did Rita go? Oh, I don't know, Chuck. Well, I mean, they don't come round for nothing, do they? Not a, with a policewoman and all. Well, I never said nothing. I don't know. I bet. Would you go and fetch Rita's coat and run back, please, love? Yeah. What is it? Well, it's Len. There's been an accident. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't know whether to go in there and tell them or what, but 
He's dead, Lord. Look, why don't you go and rest for a couple of hours? You look fit to drop. I'm not tired. I just feel numb. Empty. As if I'm not really me. As if all this was happening to somebody else. It's a funny feeling. I know what's happened. I know what's going on. And yet, it's like I had nothing to do with it. I keep expecting that door to open any minute and then to walk in moaning because his teeth are on tape. I still can't believe it. Why, maybe? Why, Len? It's so much to live for. We both had. Why does it happen to people like us? I don't know. Thought you were going back to bed. What's the point? How does it happen, Alf? One minute you're there, large as life, a good 20 years stretching in front of you, and the next minute... Oh, it makes you think, doesn't it? Look, I'm sorry about that. I know how you're feeling, but I have asked you before about smoking at the shop. All right. I'm sorry, Alf. I didn't really want it any road. Honest, when Betty told us what had happened, I thought I'd turned to stone. I think we all did. But I still don't see how it happened. I mean, it weren't late, not that late. There can't have been that much traffic about, nor at that time. No, well, apparently he just went off the motorway straight into the side of a bridge. There was nothing else near him at the time. But why, Alf? Did he have a heart attack or summer? Oh, I don't know. Don't think the police know, not yet. It could just have dozed off. Dozed off? Well, it does happen, you know. Many a time I've had to pull off the road when I think my eyes closing. Why well, wait in your life? And when you think of all he'd been through and all, wartime, peacetime, then suddenly... I've lost a good mate. I know that. Oh, I. Me and all. Sounds like the natives are getting restless. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, Al. Early bird. Mm. There's no wrong, sir? No, no. Ken's playing breakfast monitor. I thought I'd get here a bit early, see if you wanted to go round and give Rita hand. Oh, I see. Well, thanks very much. I could have hung on, though, you know. Yeah, I suppose you could. I just wanted to feel as if I'm doing something, you know. I'm... You feel so helpless at times like this. How what you say seems trivial and useless. I don't suppose you've heard how she's taken it. No, I haven't seen her since last night. Done something proper then. It'll come on to roost me now, though. Only me. In here. I uh, just came round to see if there was out I could do. I'm all right. Mavis has been a saint. Are you on your own? Just for now. She's gone to do papers and then she's closing up at tea time. Till tea time. Are you all right? As well as can be expected. Well, you don't look it. You didn't go to bed last night, did you? Well, I wouldn't have slept any road. No, I didn't sleep much either. I just lay there, trying to convince myself it was all a rotten nightmare. Aye, me and all. Only now I know it isn't. It's real. Len's gone. And everything he worked for, everything he built, everything he planned, me and him, all gone. Wiped out in a split second. How can it happen, Elsie? I don't know, kid. Honest, I don't. But I know exactly how you're feeling. Believe me, I do. You know, it's like losing your best mate, your kid brother, and the only pal and the man that you trust in the whole world, all in one. And there's not much else to lose after that, is there? Not like losing your husband, though, is it? It's half my life, gone. Just wiped out. I know. And there's not much I can say to change that. But I still think there's something left to be thankful for. Thankful? Yes, thankful. I think I knew Len Fairclough as well as most. 
And I think you ought to be glad that you met him when you did. And that you had the sound common sense to marry him when you did. And that you had the six best years of your life with him. Six years? It's nothing, is it? Six years with Len Fairclough? You must be joking. It's better than 60 years with some of the fellas that I've met. Well, tell very much. What for? For clocking us in, that's what for. Now, come oh. on, dear. You know what Baldwin reckons to that. Anyway, you should have been here five minutes ago. Why? What happened? Hey, don't start getting cocky with me, Duckworth. I don't think you are when you're at home. You're not the supervisor now, you know. Knock it off, you two. Well, she's always picking on me. I'm not the only one that's late, am I? No, she's got a point there. Elsie's not in yet. How do you reckon? She's sick. Is she? Because, like, I've just seen her going to bring her fair crust, didn't she? Well, it's hardly surprising, is it? Her and Len were old mates, weren't they? <laughs> oh, I swear. Well, what's that got to do with Alt? Haven't you heard? Heard what? He got killed last night. Len Fairclough, yeah? Oh, he never. Yeah, he did. Hunt the motorway. away. Why, it? Len Fairclough. Oh, I think I've seen him in the Rovers. <laughs> well, you'd have to have your hat pulled right down over your eyes if you haven't, kid. Mm. There was setting home with that. Hey, how did it happen? Belting down motorway, so I heard. You don't know we were belting down anywhere, Vera. Well, why else were we out motorway? You don't go on there for look at scenery. Not everybody drives like your Jack, you know. They're not all flaming maniacs. When did it happen? Well, it was well after about the eight o'clock, love, as far as I can make out. Well, after the opening time, but that's what you're getting at. I wasn't getting at anything. I was just. <laughs> Had he been drinking? Nobody said out, have they? Except Port's mouth here. Listen, one of these days you're going to choke on that tongue of yours. That's if somebody don't throttle you with it first. Now, come on, let's get on. Look, there she goes again, bossy knickers. All right, all right, clever clogs. When Baldwin comes in and finds out we've done no work, you can tell him why. I will. And I'll tell him truth and all. What truth? That you kept us talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you sure there's nothing I can do before I go? No, thanks. Alf's coming round this morning to sort everything out. Well, let's be off then. If there is out you need, you know where I am. Yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, lovey. I did it for my sake as much as yours. I think I would have gone spare if I hadn't had somebody to talk to. Thanks, anyway. I'll go. It's uh, time I was gone, anyway. What am I supposed to say to that? I didn't mean to sound insensitive. Oh, no, of course you didn't. I'm sorry. It's just that I've had quite a few visitors this morning. They all keep asking how I feel. As if I've got measles this summer. And I keep having to say I'm fine, thanks, under the circumstances. <laughs> what I really feel like doing is screaming from the rooftops. And I feel as if I've lost an arm and a leg. There's no tomorrow anymore. The whole world's collapsed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Emily. <laughs> I just had to get that off my chest. I know folk mean well, but trying to make out that they feel worse than I do is no help to me, believe me. Oh, I know. I lost Ernest very suddenly in tragic circumstances as well, you know. Oh, of course you do. I'm not going to even start to tell you how it felt at the time, because I couldn't. But what I can tell you is, it is true what they say. Time is a great heal. <laughs> you look around, you surprising how many memories of your life together you have. Little things that remind you every day. You learn to live with them. You remember the good things. The good times. Oh, Emily. Oh, I'm glad you came. I am honest. Do you know, you're the first person that's actually talked about a future. Well, if there's anything I can do. I shouldn't think I'm the first to say that. No, you're not. But I'll remember it. Thank you. 
Not in love. What are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd come in and give you and get the place straight again. Give her something to do. And since the police told us about Len, I've hardly been able to settle to a thing at home. Mm. <laughs> we're a bit of a shaker, weren't it? You can say that again. <laughs> he was a good mate to a lot of us round here, you know, I can tell you. He had his points, I suppose. Mm. A little bit too much mouth for me, but... Well, I suppose it could be worse. Very moving, is that, Fred? Mm. Mm. He'd be deeply touched with that. Hey, where are we starting? In the select? Yeah, I think we're better, Betty. Looks like a bum's dropped on it since last time when we locked up. You mean Hilda's knees up? You know, I feel sorry for Hilda, really. Yeah. You know, she was right looking forward to that, do, and then all this happened. Everybody's there, enjoying themselves, letting their hair down, you know. Well, having the time of the life, the word, and then PC Plodney's up, who walks in, and, mm. well, that were that, weren't it? Yeah, I bet we're saying if she, if she lives to be 100, she'll never forget that moment. That's the address at solicitors. Oh, right, well, uh, leave that with me, love. What about funeral arrangements? Don't worry about that. We'll talk about that later. Sorry to be so helpless, Alf, but at the moment, I don't even know what day it is. Oh, don't worry, love. Now, is there anything else we should do while I'm still here? Not that I can think of, no. What about Yard? Oh, that'll come to no harm. We're Len working in Ashton and young Roy being at Tech. It's been closed for a couple of days ah. anyway. Oh, did these come this morning? Yeah. Well, you don't talk to them while I'm still here. In case there's anything needs attending oh, to. Oh, there won't be anything that can't wait. Well, there's one here from Sheffield. Oh, Sharon. Look, Aria, have you got a number? No, I think I'd better do it, Al. It's no bother. No, I know it isn't, but I think it's better coming from me. It's going to knock her for six anyway. Len was something special to her. Very special. It was to a lot of us, love. Yeah, it was. Right, who's coming over the road? I've had enough of this place for a while. I'm coming home. Say, what are you doing? Eh? Dinner, we're off cross road. Oh, uh, I don't feel like it, not this dinner time. Alright, sort yourself. Come on then if you're coming. It'll be time to come back before we get there. Yes, sir. Have you got a minute? Yeah, what is it? You, uh, asked me if I fancied the job of supervisor. Yeah, but you gave me the impression you weren't interested. Oh, could change my mind. So you're telling me you are interested? I could be. OK. OK what? Well, OK, I'll think about it. Just think about it. Right. I see. You gave me to believe that the job was mine if I wanted it. Really? Whatever gave you that idea? I can't imagine. Look, you've got to eat something. I don't feel like it. Well, you can manage a drop of soup. Now, come on, try and get it down. Oh, my love, come in. Where is she? She's in there. Sharon, what are you doing here? Oh, I have to come, Rita. I have oh, to. Oh, no, come on. That's not going to help anybody, is it? It is true, isn't it? I mean, I've not just been dreaming. It's true, love. Oh, I couldn't believe it, honest. I couldn't. Well, I still can't. Not Len. I know. Come on, love. Sit down and take your coat off. Maybe this will get you a cup of tea. Oh, yes, of course I will. I'll go and brew a fresh pot. What's the case for? I'm not going back, Rita. Well, not yet, anyway. They said I could stop for a bit. It's all right, isn't it? Oh, of course it's all right. You're always welcome here. You know that. When did it happen? Last night. Sometime between half past seven and eight, as far as we can gather. Police are still looking into it. He was on his way home. He'd been working in Ashton. And yesterday, it was the Ogden's Ruby wedding. They were having a party at Rover's. I told Len not to be too late. Now, stop it, Richard. You've got nothing to blame yourself for. He went out yesterday morning. Same as usual. Said, I'll see you later. I never saw him again. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, that's right. You have a good cry. You'll feel a lot better afterwards. No, I won't. I'll never feel the same again. Never. Hello. Same again, is it, Squire? No, thanks. Got to be on my way, Fred. Oh, already? I thought you were the governor over there, the boss, you know. You've got a worse job than this lot, you. Well, some nests are giving out workers, Fred, don't they, Mr. Baldwin? I didn't realise we had any, Vera. Oh, that's told you, big mouth. I hope he weren't looking at me when he said that. Me neither. If the cat fits. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, yeah. you know this business about supervising, you know? Yeah, what about it? Well, we need one, don't we? For the first time in my life, I'm in complete agreement with you. Here. You don't want the job, do you? Hey! No chance. But listen, why don't you let bygones be as beans and give Ivy a job, OK? Ivy may not want the job, then. Well, leave it with us. If we can talk around, is it hers? It's not as easy as that. Eh? Well, I've got all the other applicants to consider. What applicants? There isn't any. Don't think Elsie would agree with you there. Elsie Tanner? Yeah, that's right. Gotta go. Don't be late. Anyway, well, there's a, a fellow coming to uh, sort out the arrangements. You know how many cars, that sort of thing. I thought it would be better if you dealt with that yourself. Yeah. Thanks, Alf. Well, if there's nothing else for me, I'll nip down to the yard and sort that out. Oh, I'll need the key, won't I? Uh, top drawer and a piece of string. Fasten to a lump of wood. Are you going to take yard now? Yes, I thought I'd go down and get the post, you know, and uh, while I'm there, I'll put a notice on the door to say it's closed until further notice. Is this it? Listen, I've been thinking, to save you the bother, why don't I put my telephone number on for folk to ring? You know, they'll need to know what happened. You don't want to be bothered with all that, do you? Alf, I don't know what I'd have done without you. I don't, honest. That's what made so far, isn't it? Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see you later, love. Mr. Roberts? Yes, love? Can I come with you? You? Yeah, please. I want to come. Up a little bit last time. Yeah, well, of course you can if you want to. You do understand, don't you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Away up! Talk at Flaming Devil. Well, that's now new, is it? Watch your backs, girls. What's that supposed to mean? Well, some of us happen to get very edgy, you know, with thoughts of cold steel between our shoulder blades, don't we? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what you're on about, Vera? Knock it I'll up, tell Vera. you what I'm on about. Listen, I've not to hide from my mates. No, she's got a point there. And you can belt up out here like a flaming parrot you are. Now, both of you knock oh, it up. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, Ivy. If Vera's got something to say, let's hear it, eh? Apply for any good jobs lately, have you? Black supervisor. Oh, so that's it, is it? Well, you didn't think you'd get away with it, did you? I mean, going behind your bait's backs like that. Get away with what? The job of supervisor was going. I said I wouldn't mind it. Where's the crime in that? Brass neck of it, eh? She tries to worm her way around Baldwin for Ivy's job and then says, Oh, what's wrong with that? I'd give the job up, Vera. It's up for grabs. Well, don't you reckon some of us that should have had a say? Just a minute, Vera. For your information, I never wormed my way around anybody. The job of supervisor was going. Ivy didn't want it. Nobody else did. Oh, I right. know says so. All right, let's find out. Did you want it, kid? For an Africa old club. Ida? You must be joking. Mighty right? Mouth? Mighty Mouth! Miss Nell's talking. Well? No chance. Well, until you get your brains unscrambled, I should keep that buttoned before somebody parks a flaming big bus in it. No, I'll not tell you that again. Now, I'm trying to make a phone call in there. If you don't shut up, I'll clear the lot of you out and I'll dock your flaming wages. Well, I'm not having her talking to me like that. Vera, that's enough. Now, hang on a minute. No, yes, no, you. You hang on a minute. If you want to go to Elsie or anybody else, get outside and do it. I'm not having my wages docked for you and nobody else, Sammy. That's more like it. Now, if I hear one more peep out of you lot, I'll... You won't, Mr. Baldwin. You set, then? I might as well go through this lot now, Mia. Well, take it with you, do them at Rita's. No, I'd rather do them here. Well, I can see to it, you know, while I'm going through it, like filing and that. You know, I think I'm the only one who understands system round here, any road. <laughs> no, you go on if you're ready. I can walk back. OK, if you're sure you're all right. Oh, you'll need the keys, then, won't you? Oh. Listen, uh, be sure to lock everything up, won't you? I have done it before, you know. Ah, of course you have. Uh, and don't try to deal with old for them. Just refer them to me. Oh. OK, well, I'll, uh, well, I'll see you. Yeah. Casuals. 
Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. Oh, right. You can't make it 2.30. Make it 3.30. Right, I'll tell him. Bye-bye. Is that for me, oh, Ivy? Uh, yes, Mr. Morgan. It's uh, Mr. Mather, and he said he's sorry. He can't make it for 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. Will you make it 3.30? And if there's any problems, will you give him a ring? Yeah, right, thanks. Was there something else? Well, uh, yes, I wanted a word. Well, go on, then. Well, it's about my supervisor's job. What about it? Well, I've been thinking. Oh, yeah. Well, if Nancy Tanner gets that job, Mr. Morgan. If she gets the job. Yeah, if she gets it. Well, I don't think it's going to go down very well with girls. In fact, I think it could be a very bad move on your part. Go on. Yeah, so, like I said, I have been thinking. Yeah. Well, that now would be tasty, you know, to keep job up like that. Oh, I see, yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to say. Oh. Well, I think I've got the gist of the conversation. Was there anything else? Uh, no, no. I, I just wanted you to know. Oh, right. Now I know, don't I? I just fancied a bit of fresh air. Seemed as good a place as any to come. Well, I'll walk back with you. Uh, no, no. You go on. I want to stay for a few minutes. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, look, I just want to nip to chemist for a minute. It's just round the corner, so I'll do that and then pop back here. Five minutes, all right? Thanks, so. Hey. Sure you're all right? Yeah, of course. Go on. You remembered all the time. Well, I didn't want to embarrass you, and I knew that you'd forgotten. <laughs> We're daft as one another, aren't we? <laughs> Come in. You like it, I do. It's lovely. <laughs> I tell you what, I can wear it. Oh, no, here we go. I'm going to take you out again. I'm going to take you out again. No, listen. Listen. My turn. You want it? I'll take it. You mean I can eat all of them? Drink all of them? You'll pick up the table. As well as can be expected, you know. I'll say a prayer for her. Hey, Ivan! Hang on a minute, kid. Listen, if Baldwin tries to work out that I'm late again, well, you're a witness, I'm not, right? All right, but not so loud, if you're a today of all days. The very in today, are Yeah, it's morning. Thanks, love. Want her to eat? Mavis has gone to the shop and she's going to do sandwiches and everything while I tidy round. So I don't want cats you doing out. OK? And uh, I've got some cups off Elsie, so hey. we should have enough. I don't know what I would have done without you. Do you know that? Well, we're quits then, aren't we? Because a couple of years ago, I don't know what I'd have done without you two. Well, I don't know. Do you think two loaves will be enough? Well, you don't want to leave yourself short. Well, perhaps three, then. Four, do you think? Maybe four. Three. Sorry, Al. Sorry I couldn't get here sooner. I know you want to get away. Hello, Mavis. It's all right, Lord. I'm just glad you got here at all. Uh, will you look after Mavis while I just check the bag? Yeah, bed? of course. Morning. How do? Now, I, I thought about some ham, but I, I'm not sure how much. Do you think perhaps two pounds would be enough? Was this for the funeral? Yes, maybe she's doing the catering. Oh, I meant to ask, uh, what time is it exactly the funeral? Half past eleven. Only I've got a fella coming this morning, you see, with a lovely load of chairs for the centre. I better give him a tintle, and then he know what's what. He won't be blocking street or out. Be an idea. I'll catch him now before he's off on his round. Oh, listen, mate. Um, something I meant to ask you. I know I've left it a bit late, but if there's anything I can do at all to help. Oh, well, that's very kind. She's of a dab hand, you know, making sandwiches. She's very good. I mean, I'm going to close shop early anyway. I'll come round when we finish, shall I? All right, then. Thank you, if you don't mind. Oh, you'd be doing me a favour, actually, love. I'd like to feel I was doing so much. Yeah. Now, lovey, 
Sure you're going to be all right by yourself? I am, yeah. If it gets too busy, I'll just tell them to come round and help themselves. <laughs> well, then, I'll think about that. No, I'll, um, I'll get Fred to come back as soon as he can. I'm sure Rita will understand, you know, with, with Mrs Walker being away and all that. I'm sure Rita will have too much on her mind to care yeah. much one way or the other. Yeah. Sure you won't like to go yourself? I am, yeah. I've never got a bomb on funerals. <laughs> and I'll remember Lem well enough without seeing him lowered into a hole in the ground. Wasn't there, uh, wasn't there once something between, you know, you and him? Once, yeah. Before he got wed. Yeah, I thought there was. Which is probably why I'd rather stop here than go to a funeral. Yeah. It's easier for everybody, isn't it? Yeah, well, you do as you think fit, lovey. And if I'm going to be thinking about Len, I can do it a damn sight easier here than stood in some drafty cemetery. <laughs> Planning to go to the funeral dressed like that, are you? No, Betty. I'm not planning to go to the funeral dressed like this. I'm washing my car dressed like this, aren't I? I'm going mm. to get changed now. Oh, I'm very pleased to it. You know what the time is, don't you? Oh, about time for a brew, I would have thought. Oh, come on, Fred. Well, you got your bucket, Fred. Drop a couple of tea bags in it. Well, give over. I've got to get washed in this yet. Oh, come on. I don't make us late, <laughs> all Fred. All right, all right. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Well, I hope everything goes as it should. Yeah. Supposed to be a comfort to them that's left, isn't it? <laughs> supposed to be. I didn't find it much of a one when they buried my Cyril lover. Still, you have it to do, don't you? Yeah. She's been so brave, hasn't she? I don't know how she's carried on. Well, probably because she's had fault like you helping her, I should think. Well, I haven't been able to help very much. I mean, I don't eat. I don't even understand about the accident, but, well, I don't like asking because nobody else has said anything, so it must be obvious to them. Mm. Well, we uh, thought we'd take some cups in. Do you want us to start brewing? No. Give it another five minutes. How is she? She's just been telling me about the wedding day. Go on, love, you were saying. Oh, no. No, it was nothing. Do you think we've got enough now, or what? Yeah? Time we made a move. Oh. oh. Well, I'd better go and have a word with the toiling messes. Not that it'll do any good, but you have it to do, don't you? I'll wait for you at the gate. Oh, all right. Right, you lot. I've uh, got to go and pay my respects to Len. Now, I know you haven't got a supervisor leaning over your shoulder, but, uh, well, I hope you're going to prove to me you don't need one. Where's Elsie today, Mr Baldwin? She's got the morning off. She's going to the same place as I am. We'll be thinking of him, Mr Baldwin. Yeah. Well, don't work too hard so you forget your lunch hour, will you? I'll see you later. When I go, I want everybody to have a good time. <laughs> Don't worry, we will. <laughs> Show a bit of respect, dear. I mean, after all, you want your next door neighbour, you know. I know. Well, I'm sorry for I'm sorry for her and all. Hey, I tell you what, shall some of us uh, finish putting decorations oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, so we're stopping work as a mark of respect, is that it? No, not all of us. You and I do carry on. Me and Shell do, won't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, what about me? You're too short, aren't you? I mean, you won't be able to eat. Yeah, I'll go and get the box. You heard what I said, then? What? Elsie's gone at funeral. He's gone at funeral. Well, of course she's going to funeral. She was a big mate of Len Peckham's, wasn't she? All oh, right. But I'm just saying it'll give them a chance to talk, won't say it? What about? Make supervisor's job. You mark my words, this time tomorrow she'll be lying over, over all of us. I just feel... If only I'd known that that phone call bit last time I get to talk to him, I could have said... Something more meaningful. Whatever it should have been, he'd known it. Rita, lovely. Hello, Betty. Hello. Rita, love. I'm, uh, I'm sorry at the last minute. I'm not going to ask you how you're feeling because, well, I'm sure you know. And it's not the kind of thing you can tell anybody, is it, lovely? So be glad when today's over, won't you, love? Yeah, I'm sure. 
All right, lads. Yeah. Oh. I was just saying, it's amazing how anyone can fall asleep when they're driving. Yeah, soon done, though. I know, but self-preservation is a basic instinct, isn't it? I thought that would have kept him on, right? Is it, uh, is it fairly definite like that, the way it went? Well, yeah, it seems like. Well, no wrong with that. I mean, you haven't had a blowout or anything. Oh, I say, uh, you haven't been on the, you know, the bevy out, No, you? no, it was under the limit. I mean, that's the first thing to look for, isn't it? Oh, aye. Yeah. yeah, well, it was definitely under the limit. No bread, cup of tea. Oh, tired, Adrian. Right. Oh, all right, you must do it. Is. I believe they knew Lenny from when he was on the council. Oh, yeah. They'd forgotten he used to do that. It's funny, I can't picture him as a councillor, honest, I can't. We probably all have sides to us that most people would never guess. Like you, for instance. Huh? You've been very kind and very courageous the way you've looked after Rita. Oh. Just being here, that's all. Just being here can be very important. And you haven't heard anybody talking about the accident? Well, yeah, but... Uh... but I mean, about there being something strange about it. Mavis, what are you on about? Oh, I'm sure it's nothing. It's probably just me, but I mean... Well, he was working in Ashton, wasn't he, Len? Yes, I think so. Yes, well, where he was killed on, on the M61. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's nowhere near. It's not on the way at all. Well, I, I don't know. No, it I... isn't, Deirdre. I've looked at a map. I guess, well, if you say so, maybe. But, I mean, it could have been out, couldn't it? Oh, it? It's coming from a different direction altogether. Look, Mavis, I, I don't know anything about it, but I honestly don't think now is oh, the best time to... Oh, I know, but I mean, that's what I'm frightened of, that somebody might say something and say it in front of Rita. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll see to it. Apparently, it's Rita, Mavis and Sharon in the first car, and me and Alf and um, the Armstrongs, is it? No, oh, it's something like that. In the second. Right. Well, I'll take him, Alex. Mm. Uh, have you got your car? Yeah, uh, I'm my passenger, I'll. Uh, Rita, love, they're here. Len? Uh, yeah, yeah, Len. Um, when are you ready, love? I don't think I'll ever be ready for this. Come on, Reet. Last lap, eh? Mm -hmm. Yes, come on. They're ready for us. Well, if it's stuck, oh, won't we? Well, we'll be here for right. duration. Yeah. Oh, we're at Rovers. We well, might oh. as well. Right. Uh, hang on, there's a queue, you know. There's been a queue here for the last ten minutes, Vera. Do you know I think he knew we're going to finish early? But, I mean, if we're only human, aren't we? Of course we are. Well, I'm saying no. I should think so, I know. Hey, that's it. Is that... <laughs> Come on, lasses. Come on, lasses.
home again. All me built for us and all. Back then. Yeah. Well, it doesn't take long, does it? No. How did Rita look? Did you see her? Not right, well. Hey, hey, up, Baldwin's there and all. Mm. Mm. You can look at your watch all you like. Yeah, don't trust us much, does it? Hey, well, come on, let's not stand no, up. Come on. Shall I dish this food out? Yes, I would love, and uh, I'll see to the teas. Right. Help yourself to drinks, won't you? I'm sure, you could do with something stronger than tea. Thanks, Rita, love. Hey, what about yourself, Rob? I think I'd better stick to tea just now, thanks. Well, I don't mind admitting I can do with a drink. I'll second that. I could sup that old bottle and still be stone cold sober after this morning. Oh, then, Fred. What? Look, don't you think that Bet's been on her own long enough? Well, so what? Mm. Well, then. Well, are you going to go over there and give a round, like? I thought we agreed that you would. You didn't want to come here in the first place, from what I remember. Betty, we've only just got here, haven't we? Don't start an argument, for goodness sake, Fred. What not in here? Come on. Oh, all right, then, Robin. Oh. Keep your hair on. I thought it was very comforting somehow. You know, the service and everything. There we are, ladies. Sugar's on the table if you Thank want you. it. I think it was nice to see so many people there. Yes. What, was this at the cemetery? Yes, there was yeah. a lot turned up. I think Rita were pleased. Oh, good. Mm. That was a lovely wreath, the one you sent. Thanks, love. Nice of you to say so. But I can't help thinking what them would have said, seeing all them flowers. If it's a daft spending money on all them soppy things. <laughs> well, I can't say there were any complications. Did he leave a will then? Oh, yeah. As far as I can make out, he's, uh, he's left everything to Rita, so... No, he has. Uh, well, it's to be a face of her, won't it? I mean, there's the yard to see to, and cabin. Mind you, it didn't strike me as a sort of bloke that get round to doing a will. Oh, I think everybody does these days, don't they? Well, I haven't. Mind you, that's because I've got no one to leave anything to. When I go, the vultures can have it. Well, you ought to make it. Here we are, Betty. Ooh. Two sugars. Oh, thanks. I can do with this as well. <laughs> will you stop dashing round and let me do something now? It's all done, Rita. Everybody's seen to, honest. Well, will you do me one last favour? Yeah, of course. If anybody misses me, will you tell them I'll be back in five minutes? I just want a little while by myself. About time and all. Well, I have to change my club at dinner. I can't be served in a blinking black tie. And there's somewhere else and all. Did everything go off all right? I suppose so, I. It's six foot under now, is Leonard, with a pile of flowers on top of him. God bless him. All right, say that again. Yes, first. Hello, a panty remark, please, and oh. yes. can I tempt you to another Albert? Oh, I do on. All right, well, tempted, old Albert, isn't he? Uh -huh. I'll have a drop of rum if it's all the same for you. All right, go on, then. I see they're all back from cemetery, then. All right, all but one. All back in the house, are they? That's right, yeah. Uh, rum for Albert, is it? No, no, no I've changed my mind. Someone else has got to do. Albert, don't tell me you're turning down the chance of a free drink. Yeah, I have. Bye bye for now, Albert. Hey, he must have a bird waiting for him round the corner, him. <laughs> How much is that? Uh, 56 per ah, Here we are. No, he once had this bird that was sweet on him. Really? Bar made at the Legion. <laughs> I think they're eloping on his bus pass. <laughs> Say, yeah. Uh, well, I don't think we should stand for it. I really don't. Well, we don't know yet, though, do we? Listen, kid, she's down that reception with him now, isn't she? And we all know she's been angling at her uh, supervisor's job ever since Ivy got pushed. Yeah. I didn't get the push, thank you very much, Vera. Well, you didn't exactly get a bouquet of flowers, love, did you? I told him that I didn't want to do the job anymore, all right? Only when he said he wasn't happy with where you oh, were doing well, it. Oh, well, anyway. Oh, Come sure on. up, this is gain us nowhere, is it? I did not get the push. All right, then. Will you accept Elsie's supervisor? Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh have you ever heard of that? Well, go on then. What are you going to do about it? What are, I, are you lot actually going to do about it, eh? I thought as much. I know what I'm going to do. What? Get myself another drink. Look, Baldwin won't be back till God knows what time. We might as well have an extra ten minutes. Yeah, I'll make up for them ten minutes early if it is this morning. <laughs> well, I don't want another drink, thank you. Oh, you are going back on time then? Don't see any reason not to. Do you know, Bright, I could tell you that, Albert. Why? Well, somebody's got to clock us in, haven't they? <laughs> Look, I was, um, I don't know if you're thinking of coming in this afternoon or not, but uh, don't bother. I could do with a bit of peace and quiet, to tell you the truth. Well, apart from me, I suppose you've got more memories of him than any of us. Yeah, one or two. See you then. 
Oh, look, love, uh, I've got to go, but if, if there's anything I can do, or you want anything, just ask. I know, Mike. I think it was a smashing fun. Yeah, it was. Thanks. Look after yourself. Hello, Albert. Hello. Who do you want? Hello, where are we, Rita? She's in there. Oh. Hello, Mr. Tatlock. Come in. Well, I know you're busy with people today, but I just wanted to offer me condolences. You know, I've done them a long time now. In fact, we've been neighbours most of our lives. Mm. Oh, he was a grand chap. I still miss him. Thank you, Mr. Tatlock. Uh, well, I'll, I'll bring it in. Oh, no. Won't you stop and have a drink and a bite to eat? Are you sure I won't be in the way? No, of course not. Well, well there is one thing. What? That's not what I've come for. I know that, Mr. Tatlock. I know that. You sit yourself down there. Have you finished with these? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, do you want me to give you a hand? Nah, I don't be daft. I'm used to it. After clearing up after 50 dogs every day, this is out. <laughs> you know, there's something I keep coming back to, and I've, I've tried to understand it, but that's the way he died. Mm -hmm. What do you mean about there being something strange? Well, there has to be, not there? Well, I thought so, too. What exactly? Well, a sudden death like that. I mean, I fell in the best of health, everything to live for. There's neither rhyme nor reason in it, is there? Well, I think we've both had our own experiences of that. Right, it takes some coming to terms with afterwards and all. Yes. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Well, she am done it. Oh, what a oh. dirty, rotten trick. Hey, you! Why didn't you clock us in? We've lost a quarter of an hour through that. You might have told us you weren't going to do it. She didn't clock you in because I told her not to, all right? Oh, hello, Mr Baldwin. How did you funeral go? All right, thank you. Why are you late back? Well, why are we? As well, she's must be yeah. smart. What, all of them? Oh, I haven't got one. <laughs> no, well, that's all right then, isn't it? Well, now you're here, let's get a bit of work done, shall we? All right, right Mr Baldwin, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Another word, yeah. He'll even come back from a funeral to catch us out. It will. I mean, there's no sacred where he's concerned. Sit down a minute, love. How did Rita take it on, Mr. Arnold? Oh, uh, I think she'd be all right, yeah. But she can't be blessed, don't it? Yeah. Help me get one or two things into perspective. Get my priorities right. Oh. Yeah, well, a couple of days I was shouting the odds, wouldn't I? And all about what? A couple of unpaid bills. Somehow now they don't see you seem all that important. I'm glad to hear it. How'd you like your job back? Cost oh. supervisors, Yeah. I need someone I can trust, and I know I can trust you, so uh, what do you say? Eh? Well, uh, I don't know that I can do job any different to what I was doing it before. You know, you didn't seem very happy about that. You do that job exactly as you were doing it before, and I'll be very happy, I promise you. And uh well, um, I'm sorry I said the things that I said. Thank you. Yes, I would ask Oh, well, that's great. Back to business then. Oh, uh, it's also coming in this afternoon. Tomorrow. Only well, between me and you, I got the impression that she thinks she's down for a supervisor's job. You've got to be joking. Her timekeeping's worse than theirs. I still think she's got her hopes. Oh. Well, she's got a surprise coming to her, isn't she? What, you have to get back to your job in Sheffield? No, they know what it's for, so they won't mm. mind if I stop for a bit longer. No, I'll stay here for a week or two and help you in cabin. Well, it'll be a load off Rita's shoulders. Mm. Oh, there you are. Well, how are you feeling now? Did you manage to get off? Not really, no. You want to help Doctor change them tablets of yours? You know, she's got these tablets from Doctor and they don't do a thing for her. Do they? I think they might tonight. Oh, yes, I think so. Anyway, listen, pair of you, thank you for being the best pals anybody ever had. The last few days, and today, I don't know what I would have done. So let me make us all a cup of tea. No, 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 you sit down, I'll get it. Hey, I'm not helpless. Time I started to get a grip again. There's plenty of time for that. <sighs> Happen, but I've got to start somewhere. So it might as well be by making a cup of tea in my own house. There's somewhat else and all. Someone I've been trying to hide from for the past five days. What? Well, I don't suppose I'm the first to think it, but happen I'll be the first to say it. Lem wasn't coming from Ashton, was he? He couldn't have been on that road. He'd been somewhere else. 
Somewhere I wasn't supposed to know about. Be what? Oh, no. Come on, then. Daddy's here with your freckles. Bye, Jacko. You took enough on when he took these on, didn't you? No, I can't handle Paul. Give over. What do you know about pigeons? It'll cost you a fortune to feed these, you know. Yes, but I've got great plans for these pigeons. All right. Putting a bid in, are you? Waiting for the privatisation of the GPO. Jack Duffworth's Pigeon Express. I can see it. <laughs> Season starts. I'll be racing them, right? Racing them? You've got to know what you do with pigeons before you can race them, mate. It's not I'm getting ginned up, don't you, Wally? <laughs> ginned up? Feeding them cornflakes? I might not be the burn man of Alcatraz, but I know a flaming sight more about pigeons than you do. <laughs> come for your breakfast, come to Daddy. Oh, give me strength, Jacko. <laughs> Listen, lads, on your travels, if you happen to fly over him, on the words, dizzy height, you know the business. Hey up, kid. Let the dog see the rabbit. You late and all? No, I'm not late. Has his new shown his face yet? No, not yet. Oh, thank God for that. Morning, ladies. Morning. Why, oh, yeah, Kelsey, you look like death warmed up. Been giving that gin bottle some hammer, have you, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to shave. To... Oh, well, unless you want me to sit on your knee. Uh, no, uh, you better stay where you are, sure, Eric, for now. Hang well. on, just a minute. Since when have you been cracking the whip again? Uh, oh, I'm here. Yeah, good news then. Did you know I've just got a strike back? No, I did not. Look, Ivy, now all she's turned in, if she wants a machine... Oh, oh I... I'm not that desperate for it, love. I think we'd better wait and see what Mr Baldwin has to say, all right? Yes, Ivy, I think we'd better add. There is some stuff in cutting once, fetching up, Elsie, if you can get a trolley. Hey, fasten your seatbelt, kid. I think it's going to be one of them days. And that'll be enough out of you lot. Oh, well, couldn't you get her to eat anything? Well, nothing much to speak of. She looks sideways at a bit of toast and that one about it. Oh, poor Rita. I don't know how she stands it in that house with lens things still all around her. He, well, his shoes and his suit still in the wardrobe. His toothbrush. Oh. Well, she's sorting his stuff out gradually. I think she's going to send him to Sally Army. Oh. I caught her crying last night. She was pressing his shirts and I found her with her head buried in one. She was crying her heart out. Well, somebody ought to be with her. Well, she don't want anybody. She insisted I come here today and help. I still, I think I'll pop round. Oh, did she say whether she might be coming in, though? She said she might pop down to the yard. Because oh. Deirdre's there, see, helping her with bills and books, you know, and things oh, like did that. Did Deirdre volunteer, like? Well, she rang, actually, and said, you know, if she had any problems with business, she'd be glad to help out. Well, she'll be a big help. Because she used to work there, you know, Deirdre did. Oh. Has <laughs> she, um, said anything more about this uh, Bolton thing, then, Rita? What Bolton thing? You know, about where Len crashed about it being nearer Bolton than Ashton. Uh, she's not still worrying about that, is she? Not said so hotels to me. with a
least it's a comfort to know that you're going to be staying over for a week or two. I mean, I did think you might not want to be hanging around sort of thing. What made you think that? Oh, simply that Rita confided in me. I mean, she does confide lots of things in me at the end of the day, and she told me that you'd developed a rather unfortunate crush on Brian Tilsley, wasn't it? Oh, mm, yeah. I did go a bit daft. Well, I can quite understand it. I mean, he's a, a very nice-looking young man. Not that I'd ever have a crush on him. Oh, you're not into beefcake-like. <laughs> no, and those days are over for me. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr morning. Watts. Now, this is Emily's lodger, this young gentleman. Hiya. Hiya, nice to meet you. I, I don't suppose you've met Sharon, have you? She's staying with Mrs Faircliffe for the time being. What can we get you? Get me? What did you come in for? Oh, he comes in to talk to me about uh, astronomy and aerodynamics mm. and Woody Allen mm. and shoes and ships and sealing wax and all sorts of things. He's a great talker, he's curly. Mm. Yeah, maybe, but he still hasn't said where he's come in for. Uh, well, I came in actually to, uh, well, I came in to, uh, well, I was wondering, I'm going to the flicks tonight to see Woody Allen. Do you like Woody Allen? Not much. Why don't you like Woody Allen? I think it's his specs. Oh, I see. His specs. Now mm. then, this is a shop. We sell things. What can we sell you? I'll take a packet of, uh, uh wine gums, please. Mm-hmm. Never. Yeah, it's come over him. He's usually so talkative. I think he just fell in love. In love? What with? With me. It happens all the time. <laughs> Hello, Sharon. I heard you were over for the, uh... Yeah, well, anyway, I hope you keep him well. I must say, you've certainly grown. Don't you think she's grown? Yes, I suppose she has a, a bit. Right. Ivy asked me to call in and pay for the papers. I'll get the book. Oh, I see. You, uh, you read it in the paper. Yes. Yes, it was a great pity. Anyway, as I say, obviously we won't be able to carry out the work. Yeah. Yes, I'll tell Mrs. Berkeley. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. That was uh, Mrs. Bower. Len was down to plumb her washering for her. She asked me to pass on her condolences. I've just fetched these down. I found them round the house and that. They're just bits and bats, mostly to do which job. Apart from that, I wondered if you needed a lift. You could brew up. Right. Get you. I never realised, you know, when you volunteered, how many memories you'd have at Yard. I hope you've not been upset. Well, I've had a tear or two, I must admit. I expected it. It's been like paying me last respects, I suppose. Well, I appreciate it, though. Now, where's the tea? Oh, it's in the tin mark split pins. At least it used to be. Split pins. No, that's as it says, split pins. <coughs> Filing systems improved. Try tap washers. Ah, here we are. Tap washers. Victory. Is there um, anything down in the job book for Bolton? I noticed anything, no. Only there's a Bolton telephone number among that lot, written on a beer map. Probably some bloke he met in a pub wanted uh, some work doing or something. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Right, world authority, tell me this. What is the worst disease a pigeon can get, and how do you know when it's got it? Oh, well, uh, um, uh, ringworm, ringworm. It is not ringworm, it is the never-never disease. And you can always tell when they've got it because they fly around leaving deposits on everything. Oh, <laughs> Very droll. What happens when you run out of cornflakes? You feed them an old brand for the breakers. Nice one, Fred Features. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do, joking apart. We'll, we'll go down to that coat, you pick a bird and I'll pick a bird and we'll race them, OK? And then, just to show that I can put my money where my mouth is, I'll, I'll back my selection to the tune of a tenner. Now then, you cover that, I'll give it to the clerk here. There you go, winner take all, right? 
Where are all the girls today? There's not been a soul in from Baldwin's. Ah, oh, there's a rush on. I'll tell you the truth, I think you're saving up for Christmas. Hey, you don't look too happy, love it. Ah, uh, my snow boots are letting water in. No, seriously, I'm, I'm a bit fed up, especially with that madhouse over there. To tell you the truth, I feel like chucking it all in. Oh, Lord. Hey, kid. None of my business, like, but these days, before I chucked a job in, I made damn sure I got another first. Don't you worry, kid. I've got quite a few fish in the pan. Mr. George Newton, for instance. My boss, you mean? Fed lad at Newton and Ridley's? Yeah. Do you remember? He came here a while back and I sat over there and he chatted me up a bit. And he says, there's always room at our place for a well-groomed, mature woman, he says. Doesn't keep horses, does it? I don't care what he keeps as long as he keeps his promises. And up to now, he's coming up roses. Now, keep it under your arm. No problem. I rang him up and made an appointment to see him. And I have to be at the brewery for 2.30 and I've got to get my skates on if I'm going to be there in time. Wish me luck, kid. All the luck in the world, Petal. <laughs> Just thinks he can get away with it, don't say. Yeah, you what, Lord? Yeah. I know, I don't know. Yeah. Look, we've paid us full whack into this yeah. Christmas club, haven't we? Yeah. So what yeah. is full whack out, don't That's we? That's right, no, I was making on at least 30 quid. Yeah. Well, what? Yeah. I'll have to drink brandy and see if I can get a roll in. Never mind the branch. Yeah. Look, we've got bored in by the short and curlies, yeah. haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. these yeah. urgent yeah. orders. Yeah. I reckon we should say, right, Monkey, if we don't get a spare share at Divvy, well, you can whistle for your order. Right, yeah, Listen, yeah. Ducky, you can't go in there shouting odds we out a ruling without facts and figures oh, to fight on. I cannot. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, there they are. Oh. The best set of girls in the textile trade. Putting their lovely perm heads together, deciding what to buy me for Christmas, I bet. I bet you were deciding what to buy me for Christmas, weren't you, eh? Well, not exactly, Mr. Baldwin. You mean you've already got it? Your little tinkers got it hidden somewhere, eh? All wrapped up in that coloured paper with uh, holly and snowflakes on it. Eh? Oh, we couldn't wrap it up, Mr. Baldwin. You see, it was a night out with Ida. We were going to make it too, but I said, oh, come on. I know he's manky, but he's not that manky. <laughs> Joke, what the clout, you? Do I take it you are not going to buy me a Christmas present? Oh. Ivy, you see here a man who is cut to the quick, hit when it really hurts. A man whose opinion of the fair race has taken a dive. Oh, yeah. Vera's got you under mistletoe again. No. No, that terrible moment has yet to come. I mean, I was hoping for a little token of my staff's affection and esteem from Santa, but apparently not. I mean, I am staggered. Not only that, I... I think my eyes are going. Really? Yeah. Either that or else he's got a new hairdo. Oh, God. Elsie's gone on a shopping hour, Mr. Baldwin. I thought that since we've got this order shopping on, you know... Hour? Hang on, what do you mean, shopping hour? What? Well, that's good, isn't it, eh? She comes in here late, says hello, that it's Marks and Sparks, here I come. Well, it was surely shopping hour, really, but they swapped. Oh, I'd like a shopping hour. Would anyone like to lend me their shopping hour? You in, Rita? It's only me, Mavis. Having a lie down. Oh, well, you'll go back if you want to. I just thought I'd pop in, have a bit of late lunch with you. I was down at the yard. I've had a couple with Deirdre. You have yours, though. Have you eaten anything? I can't face out. I'm sure you'd feel better if you did. I doubt it. You've been sorting things out a bit. Do you want me to see to them? No, phone the hostel. They're going to send somebody to collect. Found a funny thing in Len's jacket. The one he used for yard. Oh, what was that? A beer mat with a Bolton telephone number scribbled on it. Oh. Right little mystery, isn't it? Why was he on the road from Bolton when he'd been working in Ashton? And now this beer mat with a phone number on it. 
Like it were a keepsake or something. I mean, he could easily have met somebody in a public house there. I mean, so, some fella that was going to give him work. I suppose so. That's exactly what Deirdre said. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, I suppose it does. But I just... I don't know. It just keeps niggling at me. Look, didn't the doctor prescribe you some new sleeping pills? I don't want sleeping pills. I want peace of mind. Oh, oh I'm sorry, babies. I don't mean to be sharp. I'm just not fit company. You don't mind if I go upstairs, do you? No, of course not. Do you want any shopping doing? I've left a list. Give it to Sharon. Oh, look, Mr. Baldwin, if I start cracking whips, she's going to go off like a bottle of pot. I mean, you lit this fuse, you know, when you led her to believe she were in line for my job. And what with one thing and another, she's going to explode and I'm not letting it full blast. I mean, you can't expect... Uh, excuse me, uh, Shirley's going for cakes. Do you want any? I'll have a word. Elsie, uh, come in a minute, shut the door. Now, look, I've got this new order to cost. I'm up to my eyes, so uh, staff problems aren't exactly the top of my list. But, uh, well, I understand you've not been too happy lately. How can you say that? When every day's like a party out there. There's me and Shirley playing musical chairs, and you and Ivy doing the postman's knock bit. Oh, Elsie, come on, don't give me the old routine. I'm doing you a favour. You know you're not great shakes on that machine. Uh, um, so just stop at the moaning, will you? I'm beginning to think you've got delusions, you're royalty or something. You're right. You know, you put your finger right on it. I think I'm Prince Philip. All oh, right, you think you're Prince Philip. I think I'm Napoleon. Now we've got this identity crisis sorted out. Do you mind getting out there and doing a bit of work with some degree of efficiency? Yes, of course. And will you do some up for me? Oh, yeah, anything, Your Highness, if it makes you happy. I'll organise polar matches in the lunch hour. I'd like the cards before the end of next week. They give me a rise. Look, I am not getting cold feet, but it's all very much up in the air, isn't it? There's nothing up in the air about it at all, Jack. I'll spell it out for you. Look, all we have to do is go down to that pigeon court, and you pick a bird and I'll pick a bird. Then we'll get some trustworthy person to take them to a pre-designated spot and let them go. Now, the rule is, it's the first bird back in that pigeon court's the winner, right? Right. All we need is some trustworthy person. Hey, and your ten quid on the table up front, OK? Aye, but, well, the problem is I'm a little bit light on Reddy's. Oh, bottling out here. Admitting it. Been shouting your gob off all the time, have you? Look, do I look puddled? I know I'm into a good thing here. No, the way I know my birds. Mm. But it, it, it's drumming up the, the brass. Yeah, well, a vodka and orange, better love, and a pint of bitter for muscles there. Oh, spending your club money, eh? I hear you've got quite a nice little bit of divvy. Hey, well, I'm not complaining. Uh, Listen, now, go sit down. You'll watch you don't get his paws on the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to Christmas, I hope? Oh, one's girl and her mother saw that was cooking dinner. Hey, love, in our house, it was who was carving the turkey. Do you know, we'd all want a leg. We'd have been better off with a centipede. <laughs> Oh, hello, Brian. Hello, Sean. We meet again. Huh? I was in the cabin this oh, afternoon. Oh, yeah, Woody Allen fan. Hey, you favour him a bit, you know. Okay, and the eyes. Uh, have you got a bottle of port to take out? Well, uh, It's for Rita. Or maybe she's ready to drop a portion to her gold. Oh, well, if it's for Rita, I'll get her one of my, uh, one of my specials she can hide at cost. Hey, have you finished playing your off, Yeah, yeah. Will you fancy a game with me, then? Well, unless, uh, Sharon, um, do you know Sharon? Well, uh, if you fancy a game later, OK. Yeah, right, OK. Hey, who's T-shirt? <laughs> I call him Godzilla. Well... Come on, look, the thing is, <clears throat> I've had my eye on this little item that I know <laughs> is just what you want. You've kidnapped Gregory Peck. I have not kidnapped Gregory Peck. You've written to Paul Newman, then asked for a pair of his comms. Oh, come on, cut that gag machine. I mean, here I am, planning a Christmas surprise for the light of my life. You're having a transplant. Transplant? What do I need transplanting? Hey, knock it off. It's supposed to be a family bowl for this. Look, I want to get you a Christmas present, don't I? But I'm a bit short. Christmas Eve, I'll do a bomb, won't I? Mm. Until then, I'm brassic lint. Ah, oh, I'm brassic lint and all. Oh, come on, don't be tight. I mean, you've just drew your Christmas divvy, haven't you? And all I need is a tenner for deposit. Deposit? Oh, it's something big then. Hey, it's not that sunbed I saw, is look, it? Look, a classy bit of merchandise, this. But the thing is, if I want it, I've got to get it now. I've got to pounce. Oh. Look, I suppose I could ask our Terry, couldn't I? Oh, you're not sponging off them. Look, there. On one condition. 
If we go out, Christmas Eve, you don't go flaming uh, silent night in it, right? You are an angel. Uh, shall I get you one? Yeah. Right. Hey, kid. Yeah. I think I'm getting a sunbed in my stocking. Well, bullet for you, I'm getting a ladder in mine. <laughs> how late it was myself, so can give me the buzz. Well, I'm very grateful, thank you. I'm just glad I could do something to help. Anyway, I've done you a, a sort of a rundown of where you stand with the orders and the bills and everything. It's on the desk. Oh, well, I'll go through them. Give me something to occupy my mind. Right. Well, don't forget to lock up. Bye, love. Good night. Uh, thanks again. Three double nine four one zero. Mrs. Proctor speaking. Hello. I'm um, sorry to disturb you. I just wondered if you knew a Mr. Len Furcliffe. Yes, I do. Well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Mr. Furcliffe was killed in a road accident a few days ago. Oh my God. Who is it calling? This is Mrs. Furcliffe, Len's wife. I mean, fun. Morning. That's it. Go on, have some morning. Do you usually give your birds that much feed? Just that one there. Get that fat, it won't be off the ground, never mind, fly. Fancy. You see, its body weight is related to its wingspan. Now, if one or the other isn't quite right, well, it won't perform efficiently. You seem to know a lot about pigeons. No, no, not really, just aerodynamics. Is that a fact? You see, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Well, till my eyes went wonky through reading all the Ornbo books in bed with a flash lamp. You are just the man. Hey, Look, I'm racing these pigeons this afternoon and I need somebody, don't I? I need somebody I can trust to take them out to, say, like, uh, Aiton Park and let them go. You don't race pigeons in winter, do you? Couple of quid, innit? Done. Slip round here when you're finished. Right. Come on, then. Who's going to be a little Led Zeppelin, then? Mm. See you later. Hey, am I late? I'm sorry. I did hear you calling me, but I must have dropped off again. Mind you, it were worth it. I had this dream about Nick Rhodes. You know him from Duran Duran. If Mavis had dropped off again, there'd be no morning papers for anybody, would there? I said I was sorry. Being sorry doesn't run a shop, which is what you're supposed to be helping Mavis to do. I thought that's what I was doing. Oh, yeah, of course you are, love, and I'm very grateful. Take no notice of me. Never do, do I? <laughs> Not really, no. Sharon, when you worked with Len, did you do any jobs Bolton way? Not that I remember. He could have, though. He didn't tell me everything he got up to. What's that supposed to mean? Huh? What did he get up to? <laughs> no! Well, not in that way. I phoned that number last night, mm. that Bolton number. A woman answered. So? Len did do a job at Bolton at some time or other, and she was the customer. Then why did she hang up on me? She never paid a bill, did she? Well, then had a list of bad debts as long as his arm. Well, you know yourself he did, Rita. Look at him. 25 to 9 and not a stitch in sight. I blame you for this, you know, Emily. Me, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, you. You shouldn't have given them their Christmas club until Friday, the day before the break. That's what they're thinking about out there, you see. What to spend it on. 
went to buy a 20 pound turkey or a crate of champagne. You shouldn't give that lot diversion. But I couldn't possibly have held it back till Friday, Mr. Baldwin. They wouldn't have had time to spend it then. I think all holidays should be kept secret and spring it on them the day before. That way they wouldn't go into a stupor days beforehand. Even Christmas? Yeah, even Christmas. Scrooge. Uh, is it right, Mr. Baldwin, that uh, you know that you're going to dress up as Father Christmas this year and go around fat with a sack full of presents? <laughs> oh, you see, I heard he was going to have this little grotto made so he could sit in it. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm thinking of doing. I'm thinking of going around with a machine gun. Now, let's get back to work, for Pete's sake. Otherwise, you'll have had two weeks holidays, next week's and this week. Oh, have you never heard of Spirit of Christmas, Mr. Baldwin? Oh, I've Please. heard of it, yes, but I find it very difficult to have any. When the bills keep coming in, your supervisor lets you down, some of you have tantrums and quit. Christmas, a season of goodwill? You've got to be joking. Have you really, Captain Elsie? Yes, love, I have. Why, well, yeah, you kept that quiet, didn't you? Well, she keeps a lot quiet, doesn't she? Like sniffing after the supervisor job. Oh, bell top beer. At least I've done it. And try it, you never have. You couldn't supervise an egg as a spoon race, you couldn't. At least I don't go crawling to boss when a mate leaves. Second she jacks it in. You must be power mad, you. It's about time to be looking for work, isn't it, Elsie? I mean, just after Christmas. As a matter of fact, love, I have got something lined up. Oh, I? Where? Somewhere in the city? More like sweeping up in a poodle parlour. Now, look, Vera, I've told you, shut your mouth or else I'll shut it for you. Oh, yes! You and who's army! Me! Me and my army! You are, army. you! Yeah, you are oh, no. Vera, that's enough. Aye, after all, it is Christmas. Well... Yes. I always get very depressed on Christmas. Oh, shut up. Boxing Day, I don't like. By the decorations look tatty. Well, so do I think it's flaming better for me. There you go. Last box of crackers in the shop. It's a lovely Christmas present, that. In fact, I'll go as far as to say it's a cracker. <laughs> They're expensive, I'll tell you that. Mm. Still, what isn't at Christmas? Do you know what my husband says about Christmas? He says it's a capitalist contract to keep the working class poor and humble. He's dead right. Oh, you try and be merry and bright. Yes, well, I think perhaps you try a bit too hard, Sharon. Well, Christmas comes but once a year. It just isn't a happy time for everybody. I mean, think about poor Rita. Mm. How is she going to feel this Christmas? Yeah. And she keeps making it worse by going on about that phone number she found in Len's pocket. It's like becoming an obsession with her. Are you doing anything special this weekend? No, no, nothing. Well, what about this fellow uh, Rita said you had? Victor. Is that his name? <sighs> yes, but he goes skiing at oh. Christmas. He's one of these very active men. Oh, why didn't you go with him? Oh, no, thank you. I never have liked snow. It's cold and it's wet. I think it's because boys were always putting snowballs down my neck when I was a girl. Oh, that's supposed to be a right load of laughs. Mm, well, I didn't find it very funny. <laughs> Hello. Um, what are you doing here again? You only emptied bins yesterday. Did I? Yes, I did. I know I did. Uh, but with it being Christmas... Oh, dear. What's up? Christmas. We're trying not to mention it. Oh, well, with it being the unmentionable time of the year, I thought you have, might have more rubbish. More rubbish to what you usually have. In one day? Yeah. Well, we haven't. Oh. So, would you like to buy some of it instead? Well... Hey, uh, do you like love stories? Not so. Uh, here. Auntie's Midnight Visitor. It's marvellous. Come on, it's only 20 pence. You've got 20 pence, haven't you? Thank you. Anything else? No, right, but... Ta-ra, uh, come again. Uh, ta-ra. Sharon, that was very cruel. <laughs> when he only came in to see you, that business about the rubbish was just an excuse. Oh, well, he's a right wally. No, it's Terry Duckworth, I fancy. It's all fixed for one o'clock. You've tied a beard then, aren't you? Oh, you're welching, aren't you? But your bet's forfeit if your bird's an on-runner. Non-flyer. You what? Well, pigeons don't run, do they? They fly. Horses, they run. I know pigeons fly. Well, you said... It... Oh, forget it. Doesn't matter. It was a joke. Well, it's not uh, funny, Terry. I've got money invested here. Yeah, me mum's money. Oh, but it's a partnership, isn't it? I mean, we're married. That's what marriage is all about. Look, it's one o'clock and out. Hang about a minute. Well, <laughs> it's uh, not very busy in here, this dinner, is it? <laughs> No, Fred, you can't skive off to raise your pot-chested sparrow. Well, I don't have to ask you, Lynch, do I? I'm taking the time off anyway, so you can, you can like it or lump it. Ditto. Ditto to what? Fred's being unruly again. 
smack across the nose with a rolled-up newspaper, do you think? We could always get him a choke, Jane. Yeah. Tough. Well, I'll tell you what it was. Sorry, love. Which one of you two is going to buy us a drink, then? Sorry, my love, I just dropped into a bike for a bite to eat. Run off my feet. Running them lucky drunks about that can't afford to drive. See you, Fred. Well, you will, my pigeon. <laughs> pigeon? Just an expression, my love. Like, uh, never mention green peas when you're talking to a duck. Just an expression. What a card your jacket ain't. And a mug. What's going off out, sir? I know what's not going off, Vera. I'm not getting a drink. Two lagers, please, Vet. Do you know, I thought you'd never ask. I asked you a question out, sir. Well, all I can say is, you know that present he was going to buy you with that same quiddy body? Yeah, well, what about it? Well, it's all in the air, ma'am. Sit down. Do you know he's getting as daft as his dad, him? Well, you know what they say here, eh? like father, like son. Well, God help him, and God help me and all. Sorry I can't make it any more than 84. 84? Sorry I can't either. You've not heard that rhyme, then? Christmas is coming, strike up the band, please put a tip in the barmaid's hand. I'm sorry, love, I can't hear you. Are you up else, is he? I'll see. Can I have a drink? Uh, no, love, I've just nipped in for a quick one, that's all. So you sure even have a drink with us now, the stuck-up bitch. I wonder why, Vera. Can you feel a sharp pain in the middle of your back? Eh? Hey? Vera's giving you some lovely black loops. I'd be very surprised if she was smiling at me. Oh, workers fighting each other. I am no longer a worker over there. At least I won't be after next week. Did you take the plunge then? Have you got something better lined up? Yeah, I did. Rem you know what we're talking about, the, the, the Newtons and the breweries coming here some weeks ago. Don't remind me. Fred did his Cary Grant act with Sarah Ridley and she left here looking very haunted. I remember. Well, you know, I was mentioning about George Newton yesterday. Yeah. Well, I went to see him and he said to phone him back, so I did. And I've got the job. back in staff at the Tropicana any time I want. Cheers. Cheers. The Tropicana? Yeah. Don't you know him? What's up with it? It's a dive, Elsie. Even I'd be pushed to go in there, and you know me, I'm not very particular. Especially when my night off falls on a wet Monday, I can get to feel very desperate. Oh, plastic. Have you actually given your notice in at Baldwin's? Yes, I have. Well, you could always ask for it back. Where's that lot? She's paying. Right. Now you know what you've got to do, don't you? I want to let you go, flap them things at your side like mad, and switch on your radar, and you'll be home before you can coo. One, two, three. Go on. Go on, up you go. And don't forget to turn left at the M602. Come on, Jimmy. You don't want us to have too much of a start, do you? Jimmy. What's wrong with you? Oh, Wick. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, I nearly got engaged twice while I was over in Germany. Honest? Yeah. There's this one girl. My dad was like a baron or something. She had loads of money. She used to pick me up outside the camp in a white Mercedes. Mm, why didn't you snap her up, then? Well, her mum started fancying me, didn't she? Got a bit confusing, didn't it? Cos they both sounded the same on the phone. I never know when to believe you. Why did you leave the army? Couldn't have afforded a Porsche on the money they was paying me, now, could I? You want a Porsche, do you? Yeah. I'm part way to having one already. You're not. I am, you know. I've got the brochure. It... Oh, well, thump you, Terry Duckworth, if you're not careful. Are you, a? Uh... Doing anything special at Christmas, like? Yeah, very likely. Oh. Be good now. Hey, you've not paid me for that magazine. I thought you'd given it to me. Yeah. I'm just going to uh, pop to Rita to see how she is. Do you hear me, Sharon? Yeah, all right. Well, can you manage on your own? Yes, I can manage on my own. I managed on my own at Sheffield, and they had to look after 50 dogs there, not bits of paper. I'm only asking. Should have been back long since. Ah, oh, 
He's let him go near the flaming gun club. He's not a full shilling, that curly, you know. He's like Yates was. All he had to do was open the flaming basket. Hang on, what's that? Where have you flaming been, you? Eaton Park, where do you think? Oh, you've got that right, any road. Is Horace back? Horace? Your pigeon. Oh, a dicky bird. Well, I released him and off he went on his merry way. In the right direction? Straight down the M602, and I told him to turn left at the end. I suppose it turned flaming right, didn't it? What about my bird? Ah. Ah, what do you mean, ah? He's dead. Dead? How do you mean he's dead? You know, dead, lifeless, kaput, zapped. How did that happen, then? I don't know. I think he must have had a heart attack or something. I said, come on, Jimmy, your turn to reach for the sky. Not a sound, not a flutter. And there he was, in his box, gone to Jesus. Is he in there now? Yeah. Do you want to see him? It must have been all that grub you fed him this morning, what, Mr Duckworth. What grub? That, that, yeah, but that, that was my way of giving him more energy for rage, you see. There. He's dead all right. Yeah. Fancy me flipping bird dying on me. All right, well, that's it, isn't it? No race, no bet. Oh, oh, hang, hang about. <laughs> now, the bet were the first bird to return to the pigeon cove, right? Yeah. Right. Well, if that's the case, if this is my bird, right? That's the coat, right? Right, it's returned. I've won. OK, Curly? Well, I suppose strictly according to the rules. Hey, kids, they're talking about you again. They'd be dumb if they didn't have me to talk about, wouldn't they? You said that about a few folk round here, love it. <laughs> ah, you're right there, kid. <laughs> Oh, trust you. Hey, what are you doing back again? I thought you were busy. Can I have a word, Lynch? Come on, Charlie. You said half an hour. You've been gone nearly an hour. There's been complications. Ask her. Go on. Ask her. Ask me what? It's in your capacity as stakeholder. Ask her. Hey, what's going on? Well, we've had a race, haven't we? How could... No, he did not. How could we have had a race when neither bird finished and one of them didn't even flaming start? Mine finished, did it? Yeah, but it was flaming dead. Is it back in that coat or not? But it's like that. It's yours. Well, no, right, no. I'm claiming that 20 quid, then. Have what 20 quid? Hang on, hang on. You're saying that you've won this race with a dead pigeon? That's just what he is saying. Have you ever heard out a flaming daft? Fred? My pigeon died on the way to the start. Young Curly brought it back. Still dead? Of course it's still flipping dead. I picked it up and put it in the coat, so I've won. What happened to your pigeon, Jack? I take it it didn't die. This pigeon didn't show up. It must have met with a lovebird somewhere. Right, Lynch, come on. Have I won or not? Look, how can he have with a dead bird? That's ridiculous, love, is that? Look, Lynch, it's your decision, and we have agreed to abide by it. You have? We have. Yeah. Well, obviously, a dead bird can't race because it's dead. No way! It was all right when it left its coat. Perfect. But it was dead when it got back. As a doornail. But his got back. Yours didn't. I'll tell you, he's met up with a lovebird uh, I'm out of guest. Fred's won, hasn't oh. he? Oh, Fred's bird got back and yours didn't. And that's my decision on the facts. Oh. And much as I hate it, I shall go and get you your 20 quid. Well, that's a diabolical decision, that is diabolical. It's the only decision you can make on the facts, mate. <laughs> I'll remember you, Faso. Is it true you're moonlight as a tar boy? Don't get bitter, ducky. You have done me. <laughs> it's me that's been done. Ten of that 20 quid were mine. What you said you were going to buy a Christmas present. Ah, shut up, Vera. Have you got no sense? Can't you see your husband just been ripped off, eh? It's me that's been ripped off, Jack. Jack! Oh, oh, Come on, let's follow her. Stop her killing him. Hey, can't we hang on a minute? Oh, three. You're evil, you two. Come oh, on. Oh, let's go. Go on. I hope you're flaming satisfied. Boy, I'm Lynch, very. Hey, it's about my Christmas, this. Oh. <laughs> well, you played a blinder there, kid. I wouldn't have let Fred win. He'd be strutting round like a manager. Well, I had to be fair, Betty. I mean, strictly on the facts he's won. His bird was first back in that court, dead or alive. Oh, well. I only hope Mike Baldwin is as fair to me when I ask him for my job back. Take a sprig of mistletoe oh, with you. Oh, hey. <laughs> I think what Sharon says the explanation. I mean, the woman in Bolton's a bad payer. And the moment I said my name was Furclough, I mean, she slams the phone down like it were red hot. She probably thought she'd got away with it after all this time. Got away without paying, I mean. Yes, I think Sharon's right, too. 
I mean, Len did have a lot of bad payers. Yeah, they sent me out collecting once, him and Len. I didn't come back with a penny. I fell for every sob story they give me. I mean, I knew they were all lies, but when they tell you the baby's got bronchitis and they haven't got enough money to buy coal, you know. Anyway, I'm very glad, Rita, because you've got enough on your plate. Now, have you thought about what you want to do at Christmas? We can have Christmas dinner together, if you like, because I'm not going anywhere. And then you can both come to us on Boxing Day. Uh, that's if you don't mind cold turkey and stuffing that's gone rock hard. You're both very kind. I'll see. Right. Well, I'd better be getting back, else I might just find Alf crying somewhere in a corner. He gets very emotional round about Christmas time, you know, especially when he looks at all those unsold plum puddings. Ta-ra, love. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. very good, hasn't she? I mean, she's rallied round. Yes, she has. I won't forget it. Right, well, I'd better get back to the cabin. See how many admirers Sharon's got there. What are you going to do this afternoon? I'm going to check it out, aren't I? Check what out? Check if the woman in Bolton is a bad payer. How? Well, it'll be in Len's job book at Ledger, at Yard. Rita, I thought you said you were going to drop it. I never said that. Oh, Emily, thank you. I really appreciate that, thanks. Well, I hope they're the sort of cigars you smoke. Oh, yeah. Yes, they are. They're perfect. Ernest always liked a cigar at Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I remember he, he did like a cigar. But he never looked right with one somehow. No, he wasn't really the cigar sort. He was a smashing fellow, though. A prince. Well, I'd uh, better do the wages. You are paying them this week, are you? Yeah, go on, I'll be generous, as it's Christmas. <laughs> Who's paying in it? Uh, is he busy? No, not very. What sort of a mood is Oh, much improved. A veritable reformed screw. <laughs> what ships are now? Yeah. You got a minute? Don't tell me you come to give me my Chrissy Prezi, or is it a joint one from my adoring star? No. What is it? Then? Well, I was uh, just thinking. I was a bit hasty the other day, giving me noticing. Mm. I think you were too. There are much worse jobs out there, you know, if you can find them. I know. So I was wondering, uh, could I take it back? Me notice, I mean. You want your job back? Yeah. I don't think that's a very good idea, Elsie. I mean, from what you said yesterday and what I noticed myself, you're browned off working out there. You're just going through the motions. I mean, I think you'd be much better off finding something else that suited you. Well, uh, suited you a bit more, that is. I'm I sure see. you'll find something. There's not much point in me coming back after the holidays, then? No, not really. We'll pay you up this week, and uh, you can go mad over Christmas. Thank you. Very much. I wish you wouldn't. You've got a perfectly good explanation. Why don't you just accept it? I know I would. There's a Bolton name and address here. Proctor, Dover Close, Bolton. One new sink unit, £115. Paid cash. Sharon was wrong, wasn't she? She was a very good payer. It looks like it. What are you doing? I'm ringing her up. I want to know why she hung up on me. Rita, don't. Hello? Mrs Proctor? This is Mrs Fairclough again. I would... Hello? Hello? She's hung up on me again. Why doesn't she want to talk to me? I don't know, Rita. Good evening. 
good on you, Alfie. Uh, well, what have I done now? Well, you've opened your shop, haven't you? You know, a boxing day and that. Yeah, well, long experience has taught me that it's better to keep open rather than let people come knocking at the door for bread and milk and things they can't live without. <laughs> I'll bet. Uh, give us a couple of packets of fags, Ged. Fags. Have you had a nice Christmas, then? Oh, very quiet, you know. Uh, £2.16. Yeah, it's been the same with us. Oh, well, mind you, I don't think they make Christmas like they used to, do they? It's all very commercialised these days, you know. Seems to start in October, by the time we get here, cut over the back teeth of it. That's uh, two pound five. Tarlo. Tarlo. Well, I don't mind that. It's when they start bringing religion into it, spoils it. <laughs> <laughs> have you had a nice Christmas, love? Nice and quiet. Oh, yes. just oh. you and Emily, was it? Yeah. Oh, well, that would have been quiet one sec. <laughs> see you, love. See you, A large slice loaf, please. Hey. You see what Tracy bought me. <laughs> get on. Why don't you go for a walk? Want to? There and back, see how far it is. Go on. Hmm, I suppose I might as well. Do you good get some fresh air in your lungs? Hello, And take a key with you. I might not be in when you get back. Oh, hello. I'm here. Just thought I'd pop round, see how you are. Well, she's a bit down. Can't have been the most exciting Christmas for her, and I don't mean all them old films on telly either. No, well, oh, sit down. Yeah. Hey, and thanks again for yesterday, the dinner and everything. Oh. Very nice of you to invite us round. I was glad of the company, and I didn't think you'd want to do much cooking. Actually, I wondered if you'd like to come round again today, because there's an awful lot of that turkey left. I've got something to do today. Thanks all the same. Rita, you're not. I'm not what? Nothing. If you mean, am I going to Bolton, the answer is yes, I am. Oh, really? And don't tell me I shouldn't. I've tried telling myself that. It doesn't work. Well, when you hadn't mentioned it for a couple doesn't of days... Doesn't mean I haven't thought about it. God knows, I thought of nothing else. Well, I can't see what good can come of it. Honest, I can't. No. I mean, well, whatever Len was doing there, it can hardly matter now, can it? Yes, love. It matters to me. Oh, hi. Hiya. Um, are you all right then? Did you uh, have a good Christmas then? Not so bad. Ta-ra. ta -ra. Oh, sorry. Sorry. And then? Flippin' heck. What's the matter? She was there, right in front of me, and all I could do was ask her what sort of Christmas she'd had. This was Sharon, was it? Yeah. I'm an idiot. I am. I'm an idiot. Oh, well, never mind. I'm sure you'll see her again. And it can sometimes be difficult to know what to say. I know what to say. I've already said it. Well, written it. Oh, here's your change as well. Oh, thank you. I've written a poem about her. I didn't know you were a poet. Well, no, I'm not normally. Would you like me to read it to you? Well, I'm not sure that you should, Norman. I mean, if it's for her. Yeah, yeah. She's a very uh, modern and lively young lady, Sharon, isn't she? You mean she won't like poetry? Oh, well, I don't know. You see, it's just that I found I can express my thoughts better on paper. Better than, you know, saying them. In fact, I'm thinking of giving it to her. I mean, I know it's not right good if you compare it with the Oxford Book of English Verse, but I'm not sure she's into that anyway. No. Actually, I'm quite proud of it. Right. I'm going to give it to her. And if she laughs, she laughs. Oh, I'm sure she won't laugh. Where do you think she'll be? The cabin? Oh, no, they won't be open today. Oh, no, no. Look, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Would you like one? Oh, yes, please. Right. I'll find her. I will. Oh, my love. I'm glad I've got you on you. Oh, something I can do for you. Well, yes, there is, actually. Anything at all, love, you know that. Well, uh, would you run me to Bolton this afternoon? Well, yeah. yeah, of course I will. Well, I'd better tell you what it's all about first, because I'm not sure what we'll find when we get there. Oh, hello, love. Hello. 
keeping all right? Yes, I, I'm fine, thanks, yeah. Well, at least you got Christmas over. That'll be a relief. What can I get for you, Hilda Love? Oh, well, I'm not right sure, Alf. I'm after some up for us dinners, on account of Stan's demolished practically everything I've got in the house. Well, apart from some ham and stuff I was keeping in case Eddie and Marion come over. Mind you, they said they'd try, but I don't think that mother of hers is in a fit state to be left, tell you the truth. Alf, uh, would you like to come over for a spot of lunch? Uh, yes, yes, I can do. Oh, here, yeah, I'm not holding anything up, am I? Cos, I mean, you just carry on and forget I'm here. That's all right, Hilda. Uh, shall we say in uh, half an hour? Uh, yes, I'll be there. Ah, can't have been much of a Christmas for her, can it? No. Still, worse behind her now, I suppose. Sonny me! Elsie! Oh, you're there. Yeah. I just thought I'd call and see if you fancy going down to the Rovers, you know, for a drink. I mean, us being neighbours, well, it seems daft not having a bit of a get-together at Christmas, doesn't it? We seem to have been managing all right without one so far. Oh, come with us. Honest, I'll go mad if I've got to stay locked up with them so much longer. So long as Sally's down, I don't think they'd notice if I didn't get back to Easter. Killing the art of conversation, is it? <laughs> well, there's never been much art in our house, kid. More like a blunt instrument. Come with us. Go on, just for half an hour, eh? All right, go on. I can't pretend there's any good reason for me stopping here. Great, kid. Hey, uh, what does it feel like, then, to be out of old winds? You know, I bet you've no regrets, have you? I know I won't have. Only one. What's that? That I didn't leave sooner. <laughs> And does she still believe in Father Plenty Christmas, food. then? I think she's giving him the benefit of the doubt, but uh, she was a bit worried how he's going to get down the chimney. Oh. Did he manage it? Well, we left the back door on the latch. I bet he was relieved to find out. <laughs> Happy Christmas, everybody. That was yesterday. We've only got 300 odd shopping days. The next one. Oh, don't. <laughs> right, what you having else? Jane says that. I am as well carry on where I left off at two o'clock this morning. Oh, aye. Uh, it'll be Christmas every night for you from now on, won't it, love? You could say that. Ken, what are you having, love? Uh, no, I'm all right, thanks. I'm waiting for Deirdre, actually. Well, listen, she won't think I'm... Oh, what's happening away with you? Will she? Look, go on, have another half. Oh, well, all right, then. I mean, it's Christmas, isn't it? You're supposed to be half sloshed. Oh, you want children, though, don't you? I mean, for Christmas to really mean anything. Yeah, you do, love. That's all you're left with is a memory of them. Yeah. I'm glad I will work and tell you the truth. Uh, hey, Hilda, that's on me, all right, love. Oh, I won't have any much, Vera. <laughs> well, all the best to you and your family. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. Hey, did you see the Queen? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, weren't she lovely? Well, she always is. Uh, Do you know, you feel she could come right into your own living room and you'd still be at ease with her. Ah, uh, you do. There were a circus on after, did you no, see it? Too Very good and all, that. Excuse me. Why, what have you done? No, 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 no. Do you, Sharon, you know Sharon? Sharon Gasket? Yeah. Uh, she hasn't been in at all, has she? Not at all, no. Won't I do? No, no, I just wondered if she'd been in, that's all. What else did you get for Christmas? Besides that aftershave you're wearing. Oh, yeah. Hey, you don't think it's too, sort of, strong, do you? No, love. All I'm saying is, when you do find Sharon, don't be too surprised if she leaps on top of you and tries to tear all your clothes off. No, no, don't say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. Hiya. Well, well, well. Sorry, I'm so long. I've to oh, well, that's all right then. You haven't heard the rest of it yet. The rest of what? I've offered to keep the shop open for a couple oh, of hours. Oh, no, no listen, not today of all listen, days. Listen, I offered. He but didn't ask me. Why? Because he had to take Rita somewhere. Ah. Oh. So? So? Well done. <laughs> Try, love. That that lad, Curly. Call for Sharon. Ah. Told him she's gone somewhere. Listen, love. Don't you think he might have got it well a bit wrong? You know, all right, so Len did a job for this woman at some time. Happen he's never been near since. Then what was he doing on the M61 when he was supposed to be coming from Ashton? Well, that does look a bit peculiar, but it might mean anything. I mean, he could have been to see somebody altogether different, you know, on business. Yeah, he could. Yeah. Except that he lied to me about where he were. And this woman hangs up every time I phone her. Oh, well. That doesn't mean anything either, really. She could just misunderstand what you're telephoning about. Well, all the more reason why I should go and see her, then there won't be any misunderstanding. Look, love, I know how it looks, of course I do. But if you want my advice, you'll just put it out of your mind. Forget about it altogether. I can't, Alf. Well, not yet you can't, but given time... Will you give me a lift, or won't you? Well, suppose I say I won't. Suppose I say no. I'll get a taxi. And it wasn't just a lift I wanted. It's someone I can talk to as well. Nay, I won't see you go by taxi, love. If you've got a mind to go, I'll take you. Of 
course I will. Thanks, Al. Oh, fancy seeing you again. I'd wondered if you'd come in. Would you like to sit down and I'll get you a drink? Yeah, thanks. What do you want? Uh, half a bitter. Shall be it. Half a bitter, please. You found her then? Yeah. A little bit after shave, if I've drawn her irresistibly from the other end of Rosamond Street. You make sure you keep that table in between you. No telling what she might do. 28, love. Cheers. I'll give you a tip, love, because it don't look like you're going to give me one. What? Don't let her see how keen you are. Let her do a bit of the worrying and the chasing. Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't do that. Betty, that lovely. Can you remember what it were like? But, young love, when the palms of your hands were permanently sweaty and you were frightened your beehive had come down. No. Most of my youth you weren't allowed to get within 50 yards of a lad. First time I saw one closer in church. Well, take it from me, kid. It's never the same again. Oh. I don't know whether it's either you frighten you too much to lose, whether you know too much you are, but some it takes the shine off. Why <laughs> not? Right, we're going. Donald. Hope you have a one as notch as night tonight, Elsie. <laughs> Do you fancy a cup of tea when you finished here tonight? Yeah, OK, love. Well, come round to our house and I'll tell you what the Tropicana's really like. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> See you. See you, kid. Hey, what were all that? Oh, no, I was just asking around for a cup of tea. It's a poem to you. Well, it's about you as well. What? You mean some of your own? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I'll read it later, eh? I don't mind if you read it now. Uh, no, I'd rather read it, uh, you know, when I'm by myself, like. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So, and what else do you do with yourself uh, when you're not writing poems? <laughs> Off licence as well, is it now? <laughs> you're not exactly a regular customer, are you? No, not for some time. But I'm right in thinking it's Alf Roberts that has it, yeah? Yeah, it's Alf, yeah. And the last time I was in here, it was a lady called Maggie Clegg. Oh, that's going back a bit. <laughs> it is. Uh, can I have 20 non-tip, please? Yeah. I expect the price will have altered as well. I'm sure it has. One pound twenty, thanks, Lord. Where are you? I thought you said you were shopping at Kula. One minute. Oh. I know him. Bill Gregory. Jam. Oh, well, well. Jam Barlow. Not a day older by the look of it. Hey, don't look so bad yourself. And how's, uh, Valerie here? Uh, no, no. Val died, I'm afraid, about 13 years ago now. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. I seem to be hearing a lot of bad news one way or another. Well, it's not all bad. Let me introduce you. Deirdre Barlow, Bill Gregory. You mean that this is... I'm his missus, yeah. Oh. And, uh, listen, there's your change before you forget. I had no idea. You couldn't have had love. <laughs> yeah, Bill was in the Navy and stationed around here. What would it be here? Uh, 20 years ago now. Yeah, I've been back here for 14 years. And then did you go to Portugal? Still there. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just here on holiday and, uh, I heard about old Len. Ah. Yeah, it was tragic, that, wasn't it, eh? Yeah. So I thought I'd better pay my respects to his widow, although I've never actually met the lady married. Rita. Rita. I've just been round to number nine. I've got the right house, haven't I? Uh, no, no, they've moved next door now, number seven. She's not in anyway. Do you know when she'll be back? She shouldn't be long. Actually, Alf's taken her somewhere, but he said they wouldn't be more than a couple of hours. Rita Fairclough, Len's widow. Oh, yeah. 
Can I come in? Well, what do you want? I think we've got something needs talking about. I don't. I don't want to talk to you. Look, did my husband come here on the night he died? I said, I don't want to talk. Now, please, just go away, can't you? He did come here then, didn't he? Well, what if he did? It's all over now, isn't it? I would have thought you'd have known that. It's not going to do any good, you know, love. Honest, I've been in some clubs in my time. Ah, but you've never worked in them, though, Elsie. I mean, happen it's just a different job and you haven't got used to it yet. God forbid I should ever get used to this one. Half of them that come in are three parts k like There's fights every night. And them that don't get thrown out, well, they're just about all they can do to stagger out, leaving the mess behind them. Well, I told you it wasn't exactly Caesar's palace. Yeah, I know. I thought I could stick it. I thought I could stick out. But this... Do you know what's the worst thing about it? Go on. I've got nobody to talk to. Nobody. I mean, the Rover's return might not be everybody's idea of heaven, but... Um... But there's Betty, Mrs Walker, folk like you come in. You can even manage to get the odd grunt out of Fred first. Yeah, and all I've got in this place are fellas who are only after one thing and usually too drunk to have any finesse about it, and silly little girls behind the barrel who think I'm summit out of the ark. So what are you going to do about it, kid? <sighs> Grin and bear it, I suppose. That and it'll get better. Well, if it does, it's the first thing it ever has for months. Do you know what I'd have been saying this to a couple of months ago? You mean Len? Yeah, Len. So, cheer me up. Tell me everything's going to get better. Everything's going to come up roses. <laughs> well, thank you for being honest, <laughs> kids. <laughs> Love. Want a cup of tea? To make us all one, eh? Oh, that sounds smashing, love. And I'll shut kitchen door. All I'm saying, love, is that a man in this country that hadn't been somewhere at some time that he'd rather his wife didn't know about. Every man has a, well, a secret life, if you want to call it that. We're mostly just a matter of putting a few bob on a horse, something like that. So you think he were with her that night? Oh, no. If he weren't, all she had to do was deny it. Well, all right, then. Suppose he had been there. There's no suppose about it. Well, if he were, I'm sure there were notes in it. Notes. All right, he might have called round to see her for an hour. And I say might, because don't forget, we don't know. I know, Alf. I might not have known before, but I know now. But what's one hour with her compared with years with you? A lot, when it turns out to be the last hour before he died. Listen, love. When Rene died, the main thing I wanted to do was to find somebody to blame. The lorry driver, myself, anybody. I just wanted somebody to blame for. You think for. I want to blame her? It's human nature. Well, I don't. All I want to do, Alf, all I want to do is to be able to remember him as he was. As we were. And what happened when I try and do that? I can't get beyond where he were that night and what he were doing there. It's blotting out the whole of our lives we had together. I've already sugared them. Tart. Oh, it's all right. I'll go. It's Len I blame, not her. I should love him. I should love the memory of him. All this, this business is making me hate him. Oh, now don't it say is. that. Hey, you go up. All right then, Alf. Well, this is a turn up for the book. <clears throat> An old pal of Len's. Yeah, Bill Gregory, Rita, Rita Fairclough. Hello. Mrs. Fairclough, I know it's a bad time, but I just had to call. He was a good mate of mine, was your husband. And no man could have asked for more. He was a great fellow. And I know a hell of a lot of people are going to miss him. And how is she in a south life? Well, how would anybody be? She keeps going as best she can. Yeah. Still, I suppose he'll have left her comfortably off one way and another. I mean, she won't have to go scrimping and scraping along on a widow's pension. 
Oh, sorry, I'm late. Oh, it's all right. We've been having a real nice chat, haven't oh, we? Yes. Yeah. What would you like to drink? Oh, uh, sweet cherry, thank you. What, sweet cherry coming up? <laughs> Not much changing here, is there, eh? There's no better now. Yeah. Give me a pint. Uh, no, I'll get these. Hey, oh, I know you. <coughs> And I know you too. Hilda. That's right. Bill Gregory. Emily, how are you? Oh, when I'm very well. Well, who's he when he's at home? Oh, a bit for your time, lovey. You're a big pal of Len Fairclough's. A very close friend of Elsie Thomas. <laughs> close? How do you mean, Betty, close? Well, you know. Hey, I'm going off. As close as that? <laughs> Hello. Betty, how are you? Oh, um, can't complain, lovey. Uh, can I have drinks for everyone, please? Yeah. And yourself and the oh. young lady by your side. I like it. Yeah, good. Well, I expect you'll find a few changes since you were last in these parts. Yes, and some I'd rather not have found. Uh, Hilda, that uh, Oh, yes, sir. And uh, a pint for him, a pint for me, oh, please. Okay, and everybody else all the way around. Now, who is the you, uh, you don't know about? <laughs> Well, you know who I'm going to ask about first, don't you? Yeah, Elsie Tanner. Right, first time, Hilda. Now, does anybody still hear from her or what? Hear from her? Give over. She's only out street, you know. I thought she went up town somewhere or somewhere. Oh, aye, she did. She's been back from there ages, though. No. Yeah. Oh, she's still at number 11. Mind you, you won't catch her there tonight because she's working at some club or other. No, I'll catch her tomorrow, though. I will, then. Elsie, eh? You thought it. What are you doing up? I was supposed to have taken to my bed, am I? Well, I thought you'd sleep till at least dinner. You were trotting up and down stairs half the night. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I disturb you? Sit down. I'll make you a cup of tea. It's not me I'm bothered about. It's you. You look like someone to even rag managed Chuck back. Tell me, what would I do without you here to comfort me and cheer me up? You were doing all right, till yesterday. I thought you were supposed to be giving Mavis a hand. Stop changing the subject. Mavis can cope on her own for another five minutes. Well? Well what? No toast for me. You'll have a slice of toast. Well, what happened yesterday that got you so upset about all over again? When you went out with Alf Roberts? Nothing happened. He just took me for a drive, that's all. Oh, yeah. I mean, Alf's been through all this. He lost Rene. So maybe I got a bit emotional again. So, you went for a ride with Alf Roberts in his car. And he talked about his wife and you talked about Len. And that got you so upset that you come home looking like you need a blood transfusion and you don't sleep half the night. Yes. All right, don't tell me. Treat me like a kid, if that's the way you want it. I did think I was supposed to be your friend. Hey, come here. You are. You are, love. But there are some things that you just don't want to talk about, not even to your friends. Oh, don't worry, Reet. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll sort itself out in the end. Emily! Yes? Oh, I'll just pop back to see if it's still all right about tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Me asking Sharon now for a meal. Oh, well, uh, yes, I suppose it is. But you won't have to bother. I'll do everything and the washing up. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Don't be silly. I'll do it with pleasure. And of course you can have your friends in. It's just that, well, I'm sure Sharon's a very nice girl, but isn't she a bit lively? That's a bit I like about her. Well, you're a much more serious kind of person, Norman. She's what you might call a butterfly. I should think she tends to flit very much from boy to boy. You mean she's a bit of a flirt? She's entitled. She's a pretty girl. But I still think that even frivolous people can form a serious relationship with people they can relate to. Well, I'm sure that's true. I just don't know that she's your type, that's all. So far, I don't know what my type is. I've never been that much involved with a girl to find out. Oh, there's plenty of time. Time? Neville Clough is two years younger than me and he's been out with loads of girls. So have all the lads used to share digs with. Well, some people start sooner than others. And you've been busy with your hobbies. Well, I expect they spend all the time in pubs and discos. Well, I should think that makes you the more interesting person. Well, I wish girls thought that. Oh, thank you. No, no, you know what I mean. 
so. Is it OK, then? Oh, yes, of course, love. I'm having a little New Year's Eve open house. Well, not open house exactly. I've just invited Eddie and Marion over, and Marion's mother, if she's fit enough to come. If you and Ken want to pop round, you'd be very welcome. Oh, thanks, Hilda. That's sweet of you. But actually, Ken and me have got tickets for a dance. So news agents do. Ken thinks we ought to go to it. I'm not keen myself. I'd rather see the new year in with people I know, mm. but... Yeah. Well, I won't be stopping up. It depresses me. Oh, won't you be having the telly on? You know, all them bagpipes and that little Scots fella singing in his kilt. Hilda, love, that's what depresses me. Oh, get <laughs> <off>. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Do you sell chocolates? Those uh, big boxes? Ah, uh, yes, we've got a few. Not as many as usual. They all go at this time of year. Present for an old friend, do yeah. I detect? You do indeed, Mrs Ogden. Huh? I'm glad to see you haven't lost any of your perspicacity. Oh, well, I always try and keep myself looking nice. <laughs> Here we are. Milk, plain, or half and half? Oh, better play it uh, safe, and I'll take that one of half and half. Right, yes. Well, if they're for the old friend I think they're for, you'd do better take in a bottle of gin. Ilda. Oh, I'm not saying she's a tickler. No, I'm just saying that Elsie prefers gin to chocolates. Well, she tell yourself. Mm. I'm only trying to help. Oh, and I'm very grateful, Mrs Ogden. Very good suggestion. I'll take both. Right, I'll order them buns for you then, shall I, Ilda? Two dozen. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, no, better make it three, else, cos Stan can polish off a dozen on his own. <laughs> Well, I uh, expect I'll be seeing you again, then, if you're uh, stopping round these parts for a bit. Oh, I've no doubt that our paths will cross, Mrs Ogden. They've never failed to before. Yes, well, uh, nice to see you. Mm. Oh, and uh, give my regards to uh, your friend. Does she have little trapdoors all over the place she pops up from? <laughs> That's how she does it. <laughs> oh, well, in one way, it's very reassuring to come back and find at least... One person hasn't changed. Oh, I don't think you'll find Elsie's changed all that much, you know. She's amazing, really. Yeah, she always was. No, it's me. I'm worried after 14 years she'll open her door, <laughs> give me a blank look and say, not today, thank you. Mr Ryder? I'll see you. I'll see Tanner. Well, well I'm really ringing up to tell you I'm not coming in anymore. Well, I don't really want to give you reasons, but if you insist... What about bad pay, for starters, bad working conditions, lousy treatment from the management and even lousy treatment from the customers, for starters? Yes, well, I'd better get back. Let Sharon have a bit of lunch. Are you sure you'll...? I'll be all right. Go on, Flo Nightingale. Hey, will you get that? Tell him I'm in the bath. Anything. from Bolton? Well, it must be. I'd better tell her to come in. Mm. Yeah. Would you come in, please? Well, I'll be off. things you can't turn your back on. Anyway, now I'm here. What did you want to know? Everything. Yeah. Even if it's things I'd rather not know, I can stand being hurt, cope with that before. What I couldn't stand is going through the rest of my life full of doubts and suspicions. I think I'd go mad. We met about a year ago. I was having the kitchen done up. He'd been recommended. Funny thing is, I nearly cancelled the whole thing. 
It was something we'd wanted for ages, you see. The old one was a disgrace. But we wanted to wait until we could afford something really nice. We used to spend hours going round kitchen shops, reading magazines. After it. No, oh, it was the same when we moved in here. Oh, it's very nice. Anyway, then he died. Your husband? Thrombosis. Just come like that out the blue. Never had a day's illness in his life. For six months I got by in a kind of days. I didn't know what had hit me. I know. Of course you do. Of course you do. Anyway, one day I come across these leaflets and I thought, right, woman, get on with it. Have that kitchen we always wanted. Daft, really, but I thought, well, at least it'll give me something to do. Len. Well, he understood that. He never minded when I kept changing my mind about tiles and taps and stuff. He was that patient. Patient? Len? I think at first he thought I were a bit of a nutcase on the verge of a nervous breakdown or something. If he didn't handle me with kid gloves, I might attack him with his own monkey wrench. He could have been right. So what happened? He helped me. Just by letting me go on about Dennis. All the guilt I felt about things I'd done, things I should have done. There's always guilt when someone goes suddenly. I suppose there's always guilt in any case. He'd work. And I'd talk. I don't think he heard half the things I said. But in a way, because he was a stranger, that made it easier somehow. What do they call it? Therapy. When you get somewhat out of your system. And then one day, he told me off. Told me to stop moping and get on with living. He could be very blunt. It was what I needed. Not sympathy and tranquilizers. That was when he helped me most of all. Some places do massacre in chili and stuff. Have you got eight more exciting? Half plenty that's more exciting, Cock, but it's not for sale over this bar. It's for sale everywhere else, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I'd say something nasty back, Vera, if I wasn't such a good friend of your husband's. Oh. Uh, do you mind if I join you? I don't like eating on my own, and I can do without them two slinging insults at each other. Feel free. How's Rita? Ah, oh, she's OK. Mavis warned me not to go round there for my dinner. She's got this mysterious visitor or something. I'm telling you, Sharon, she says, if you go poking your nose in, you'll have me personally to deal with. Oh, she gives me a right penny, penny. Uh, excuse me, uh, have you got a minute? Sure. Me and Ken don't mind if you join us, do we, Ken? <coughs> Not at all. No, no, I can't stop. Uh... Uh, what are you doing tomorrow night? Why? What's tomorrow night? Well, I thought you might come round for tea. Uh, Mrs Bishop will be out. Oh, I don't know if I can come without a chaperone being there. You might leap on me. Oh, I wouldn't. Oh. Oh, it would be nice. Honest, we could sit and we could talk about things. What things? Poetry? He wrote me a poem, you know. Oh, then it's obviously a young man of imagination, as well as initiative. Is it? I thought it meant you were a bit soppy. So, do you think you can come then for tea? I shall have to consult my diary. I'll let you know to get. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you later. You've told me a lot of things, Mrs Proctor, but you haven't told me the one thing I've got to know. Did you and Len sleep together? At first we just talked. He was a friend. At first? I was that lonely. He wasn't. How was he? No. He loved you. He often talked about you. Charming. Before or after. Oh, don't be like that, please. It wasn't like that. Looking back, I can see exactly how it was. I was there. I was available. I suppose I'm not exactly unattractive when I make the effort. 
There aren't many men, however happily married, would refuse a bit on the side. I'm sure Len didn't look on you like that. Maybe not. But I wasn't much more. I know one thing. He'd never have left you for me, not in a million years. Would you have wanted him to? No. I liked him. I was grateful to him. But I wasn't in love with him. Oh, I shouldn't be talking to you like this. I told you. I wanted to know everything. And we wouldn't be having this conversation if he hadn't have died. Not like this, anyway. I loved my Dennis, you see. Oh, he was no oil painting. He was a bit overweight. He could be grumpy. He used to drive me potty sometimes with his do it yourself in when I wanted to go run out somewhere. Once I threw his black and decker clean through kitchen window. But he was my husband and I miss him. Oh God, I still miss him. Oh, I know, love. I know. Please, now you know, don't think badly of me. I didn't try and steal him from you, honest to God. It's just sometimes you need someone else's arms around you more than anything else in the world. Even if it is only for a little while. <laughs> I don't think badly of you, love. You turned up just in time to cheer up an old pal. A fella? No, not a fella. A job. Just chucked in a lousy job. And other things besides. You didn't come here for me to depress you, did you? Tell me about Portugal. Hmm? Gregory's Bar. Hey, oh, it's lovely. What do they call that purple stuff? Bougainville. Bo that's it, yeah. Yeah, we're a couple of miles outside Albufeira, right by the sea. Well, tell me. Ah, what can I say? It's another world. Very quiet where we are. Almost a village. Just miles and miles of golden sand in the sea. We open late morning, stay open till two, three sometimes. We've still got customers. We serve the best sardines on the coast. <laughs> well, anyhow, that's my story. Now you, you sit out under the stars at night, still be in the 70s at midnight, drinking vino verde. It's... Another world, you said. Yeah, we've worked damned hard as well. Oh, I am sorry. If I'd have known you were suffering like this while I was having the time of my life sitting in my sewing machine. I thought it was a club. No, it was a club this week. It was a factory last week, next week, who knows? Not what I'd have seen for you, Elsie. Not what I'd seen for myself, either. Hey, was, was that him? A big chap. I saw him go into, in, into her house, so coming home from work. Yeah, that'll be him. Bye, I can't bet he'll see a few changes in her. Oh, we'll all get the odd extra wrinkle, you know, 14 years old. Not but... me, I don't. I improve with age like oh. vintage pose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, six at the bottom, like said him. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I'm not having you spending the rest of your life in flipping hibernation. All right, now, so now come in for half an hour to please you. Now, don't push it. Oh, oh, nice to see you, Rita, lovey. Hello. What can I get you, Cox? Barmaid's Street. There's not many of them in the pound. I'll have my usual bet, please, thank you. Go on, then, you and all, seeing as you fetched her. I'll just have half a bottle of champagne. Oh, you'll have a baby sham and like it. Oh, in that case, I'll have a beer. <laughs> oh, <Sure>. Yes. <laughs> She came to see me. That woman? We had a long talk. And? Well, there was something between them. But it only started because he felt sorry for her, and it never amounted to much. She took most of the blame. At least, that was the way she told it. She seems a decent sort, Al. Maybe she's trying to spare me feelings. Who knows? Why do you go on tormenting yourself, love? Len was a good man. He was just soft enough to sit there and listen to somebody's tale of woe when he'd sooner have been here supping with his mates. And if it did go a bit further than he intended, like this Mrs. Watson said, it won't have gone all that far, love. 
If you want my advice, best thing to do, put it out of your mind. It's for the best, honest. Yeah, I think you're right, Phil. Oh, there. I've been knocking and knocking and there was no answer. And I thought, well, she can't be in bed yet. Can I get you a drink, love? Oh, thank you. I'll have a sweet sherry, please. What happened this afternoon, Rita? Was it very dreadful? No. no, we had a nice chat. Everything was explained to me. It was all a big misunderstanding on my part. It just shows the harm you can do when you jump to the wrong conclusions. So that I mean, there was nothing? No, no. Oh, nothing at all. Yeah. Do you know it? No, what? About tomorrow night, if you can come. Oh. Well, go on then. So long as you don't write me no more poems. Why didn't you like the last one? Oh yeah, it was all right. But I mean, once a girl's got one poem, how many more does she need? Nevin, when it comes to fur coats. <laughs> shall we finish this or shall we eat first? Oh, I'm in no hurry. Perfectly happy as I am. So am I. You know, that's the first time I've been able to say that in years. Why did you come back? Oh, I don't know. When Alan and I broke up, it seemed the only sensible thing to do. I never made any friends in Newcastle. So I came back, home to lick my wounds. And stayed? Lazy. <laughs> oh, not you. Oh, well, all was finished up on my own midding. It is possible to break out. I did. Yes. You did, didn't you? And now you're here. Oh, only briefly, I know. But let's make the most of briefly, eh? And we're back in Weatherfield tomorrow morning at the same time, 9 o'clock. And the soaps don't stop there because Emmerdale is coming up next.